is that moment again, the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite, of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Le sacrifice que tu fais, quand toutes les chances sont contre toi, when you can't push one more second, chase the glory. Viseo. Sports on CBC, presented by the Championnat du Sport à Radio Canada. Une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Fettner. Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre Partenaire des Prix de l'Entraîneur de l'année U Sport. Veraburn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du Sport Universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusif des bagues des championnats U Sports. Hello and welcome inside the Madame Athletic Center for the final quarterfinal matchup of the day for the National U Sports Men's Hockey Championship. Damian Smith joined alongside Griffin Butler for the final game of the day, set for a 7 o'clock start between the UBC Thunderbirds and the McGill Redbirds. So it's the battle of the birds here tonight. UBC, the number three seed. McGill, the number six seed. Both teams, they kind of match up kind of well up against each other. Similar records in the standing. We'll dive into that a little bit later, but it should be very interesting to see how these teams match up for the first time in U Cup history. Yeah, like you said, this is the first time these teams are playing each other. Both teams are excellent on special teams, and it'll be really interesting to see who comes out on top. And so the winner of this game will play UQTR, who beat Moncton earlier today this afternoon. So top three slots are see, are they're set right now and if we go by this standard UBC should win it with the top seeds winning in every single game but we got one more matchup here today and it should be a good one between the battle of the birds here tonight good indeed and we've been so pleased with the caliber of games in the quarterfinals so far they've been extremely exciting two games that weren't too close but still high level hockey all around especially that TMU uh, bold versus Calgary Dinos game last night was unbelievable. And both teams obviously are very close in the standings. A little bit of a different storyline, I guess you could say. UBC winning their respective championship in their own division. McGill losing in the final four and then winning the bronze. But both teams very similar records. I think UBC has got a little bit of the edge in the offensive and defensive end. But McGill, you got to look at those special teams. They are very impressive. Yeah, you look at that PK percentage number, just 0.1% higher than UBC. McGill has the number one PK percentage in the nation, but you see UBC on the other side. They are excellent defensively. They don't give much up. They don't give many shots up at all either, and their goals for they got a very balanced team that likes to move the puck around, and, and they have got scoring threats on all three lines. And McGill wants to come out with a win tonight. I think they're going to have to take advantage of those special teams, especially on that power play. 34% good for first in the entire U Sports landscape. A very impressive power play that has been led by David Urquhart. All right, let's take a look at a couple of very high-flying offensive players and Eric Uba and Sam Huo, a couple of top-notch scorers, at least on the forward side for both teams. Yeah, you look at Eric Uba for the McGill Redbirds. He's had 11 points in six games in the playoffs. That is absolutely yeah. absurd. Eight goals, too. Eight, Eight goals. goals. Yes, he uh, he's leading all of U Sports in playoff points currently. On the other side of the coin, Sam Huo, just as good. You could say he's had eight points in his uh, playoff games for the UBC Thunderbirds. 14 goals, exceptional, exceptional part of me, and 19 assists. Both of these two players are going to be the players to watch for the game. You can expect them to get on the board 
even in this defensive first game. Couple of great offensive players, but both teams can definitely put in the defensive work. Couple of solid goaltenders in the net as well. But we'll see how these two teams match up against each other. We got the UBC Thunderbirds in number three, the McGill Redbird in number six. We'll see which team can fly high in the quarterfinals and make the final four. We'll be back here on CBC Sports. and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline. Our passionate team unlocks a world of possibilities with digital broadcasting made simple, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. Proudly Canadian, ISI Live, be there. and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline. Our passionate team unlocks a world of possibilities with digital broadcasting made simple, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. Proudly Canadian, ISI Live, be there. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. sports fans check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the nike team collection visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection nike team
Welcome back inside the Madame Athletic Center for the final quarterfinal match of the 2024 U Sports National Championship for men's hockey. We got the battle of the birds here today. The University of British Columbia Thunderbirds up against the McGill Redbirds. The away, they're sorry, yeah, the away team here today. We'll take a look at their starting lineup. A couple of high flying offensive players and a solid deep pair back there with Alexi Shank backstopping in between the pipes. Yeah, you know, you, what jumps out right away is that those top three forwards, Uba, Rulo, and Frateroli, all well over a point per game, all got 40 points on the year. They're going to be tough to stop this game. As we are underway for the final quarterfinal match of the 2024 U Sports National Championship, it's been a great one so far here in Toronto, Ontario, at the Madame Athletic Centre. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the UBC Thunderbirds, who are fresh off of a title just a couple of weekends ago. Top pair D in Jake Lee and Johnny Lambeau is very solid back there, but they also got some really good offensive players in Liam Kinry, Chris Douglas, and Scott Atkinson. Yeah. We're all out on the ice right now. You know, you got to watch out for Jake Lee this game. I believe the McGill Redbirds do. Jake Lee leads the UBC Thunderbirds in points. He's a very offensive defenseman, a nice 6-2 build, and he's going to be a player to watch for sure in this game as well. Almost a point per game last year as a first-year defenseman too, so a very solid two-way presence back there. Plus 23 led the entire UBC Thunderbirds in plus minus so far this year. He's probably going to be logging a ton of minutes tonight for the Thunderbirds as a number three seed. Long dump in there. Goes into the corner. And the McGill Thunderbirds will break this one out. Long stretch pass that's blocked at the line. Pass over. They drop it back and the puck goes outside of the blue line there. Mutala takes a hit from Gagno at the blue line. And we have the first big stoppage of play. Looks like Mutala is going to be headed to the box at the current moment. Number 34 just a minute into this game. Yeah. CBC and Sports is the home of University Sports in Canada. Catch the best U Sports women's hockey teams as they face off in the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy in Saskatoon. You can catch all the action on all CBC platforms. UB, U Sports on CBC. Chase the glory. Get a chance to look at this McGill power play starting out number one in U Sports. We'll see what they got against a very defensively strong and defensively sound UBC team. Yeah, led on the back end by Scott Walford, 24 points in 20 games. A notable third round pick from the Montreal Canadiens back in 2017. Frateroli out there, he loses it to Kyle McNabb, who just chops that one out. And they come back the other way. Redbirds trying this one once again. Galant. As we have a player going into the net, it's Pouliot there. Galant giving a little bit of a shove. You can see the physicality building up already. These teams, like we said earlier, have not faced each other. We'll get another look at this here. Just got caught up. A little trip possibly into the net. Miguel might have got away with that one a little bit, Damien. Faceoff's going to be outside. Still a minute 20 left in this power play. Uh, Cole Schwebius getting his first contact of the game as we still await the first shot on net so far tonight. So far, the UBC Thunderbirds doing good. Do not let McGill get into the zone and set up that power play. Got a quick change here for the second line for McGill. As Sashu Mutala awaits his penalty to end with 1.15 left to go in the minor. Very early on in the game as the refs start to set the tone between a matchup that really doesn't happen that often, being that these two teams are very far apart from each other geographically. They got a good chance. The Thunderbirds get a great chance there from Carson Miller. Couldn't get a stick on it. Forte goes back the other way, and the Thunderbirds will clear that all the way down 
into the Redbirds end. Nice clearance there by Johnny Lambos, the 5'10 defenseman out of Winnipeg, Manitoba. Maxi Blanchard will drop it back to William Bruleau, one of the top scorers. Frateroli takes a shot. That goes off of Jake Lee's stick and up into the netting with 32 seconds left to go in the minor to Sasha Mutala. Frateroli is a player you don't want to let get his shot off. He has six points in the playoffs so far, a goal and five assists. He's really a great playmaker on this first line with Rouleau and Uba. Really helps get them the puck and, and get Uba on that scoring sheet. We got Uba with eight goals in six games, too. Put three helpers on the board as well. Led the entire OUA playoffs in scoring with 11. A pretty dominant performance, but unfortunately for McGill, they just couldn't win the chip this year. Got the third spot, and that made them sixth in the U Sports National Championship. As Alexi Shank will go back to get it. He'll play it over for Taylor Ford. Missed pass. Douglas will pick this one up over the blue line. Douglas trying to find Ford. He takes a big hit there from Zachary Galah coming back on the forecheck. Makes a pass over, looking for a give and go, but that's picked off by Puglia. Zachary Galah with a big open ice hit. The 6-2 Ford from Oakland, Ontario. He was a 2017 third round pick by the Detroit Red Wings. Staying in color with the red and white with McGill. will get Another look at this possibly here. Yep, just caught the tail end of it. Big hit, set the tone at the beginning of the game. Yeah, absolutely setting the tone for the Redbirds as they take a long shot towards the net, looking for deflection, can't get through. Mutala looking to clear that out. He does, he'll flip it up for Williams, looking to chip it past the McGill defense. Thomas Belzeal, Williams off the boards. Back for Huo, he gives it back for Williams. Looking for a shot. Doesn't gives it off for a one-timer, but that just goes past the stick of Mutala. Huo looking for a pass to Mutala in the slot. That just goes past them. Gagno off the boards. Forte corralling that puck. We got Gagno and Williams battling in the corner. Now Smith will hit that off the boards there. Matthew Smith in behind the net. Drops it off for Mutala. Still not a shot in this game yet, Damien. We are just under five minutes in. We'll see if we can get one on this rush here. Oh, there Long go. shot goes on, and that's the first shot of the game right there. But we were talking about how both these two teams are excellent defensively as Jake Lee corrals the puck, looking to get that puck near the crease. But we got an odd man break for the McGill Redbirds. Drop back a shot and a good save there by Shuebius, his first on the night. As Zachary Galah will recall this puck. Puck goes up and into the stand, so we get our first souvenir of the night. Seen a lot of souvenirs over the last few games. It's Mad at the Athletic Center. It's a pretty open concept. Pucks can uh, go flying anywhere. As a fan, you definitely got to keep your head up. But for those who don't know, the boards actually seem to be very low in this arena. There is no delay of game penalties in the OUA, so if a player has it in his defensive zone, chips it out without any deflections, it goes out. There is no delay of game penalty there like the NHL would have. So it's interesting rule for sure. Uh, it threw me off a little bit in my first OUA game ever, but Walford will pass it across. Long shot looking for deflection, just goes wide. Jake Lee, long pass. That doesn't hit a friendly stick, and we'll have an icing called against the Thunderbirds. Just nearly nicked the side of the net there. For McGill, this is their first appearance since 2018 in the U Sports Finals. That would have been, this is their 10th appearance in 18 years, actually. Uh, they made the U Cup Final twice before. Uh, they went to the final in 2011 and lost in a heartbreaking fashion, but then came back in 2012 and won in overtime. Quite a story. We'll see if they can uh, get back to that winning level here in this year's U Cup. Yeah, 4-3 overtime thriller. Doesn't get any better than that. And we'll see how these two teams sort out this game as UQTR, the University of Quebec, Trois-Rivières, waits one of these teams that will be the winner and match up against the Patriots. Here's McNabb circling back as he'll just restart this. 
Drops it off for Jake Lee there. Johnny Lambos, long stretch pass, and I think we'll have another icing called up against the Thunderbirds. Lambos just missed the mark there on that pass. UBC forward was cutting across the ice, couldn't get there in time. As a result, the, the pair of him and Lee are going to have to stay on. I know it seems like not too long of a shift, but definitely got some tired legs out there. We'll see if Miguel can capitalize with this line of Gagnon, Fortin, and pardon me, Stephen Uard. Yeah, it looked like William Poirier just on that replay a minute ago got like maybe a stick or an elbow to the face and he didn't like that, wanted a call but McGill Redbirds don't get that after getting that power play early on in the first period just a couple of minutes go to Sasha Mutala, long shot goes all the way down and Nicholas Pavon will come back to get it dropping it back, a shot going towards the net, that is stopped by Schwebius, probably his scariest one so far of this game. Nice job by Schwebius to handle and manage that redirection by Uard. That was a scary little chance, but he made it look quite easy. Save that, no problem. Like you said, Damien, these goaltenders are top notch. They've been great in the playoffs. Uh, they've been great all season long, and especially Schwebius, he uh, is one of the top goaltenders in the Canada West for sure, and in all of U Sports, one could argue. Yeah, 913 save percentage in the Canada West Division in 15 games this year with a record of 13 0 and 2, so did not lose in regulation one bit. Goals against average of 1.9, so this is a team that does not allow a lot of shots, but they allow one here. We got a good chance for the McGill Redbirds there in the slot. They take another one that's blocked once again. In the slot by Scott Atkinson. Here's Mulford, chops it up. Puck goes into the neutral zone. Good chance here for Frateroli. Looking for a pass, can't get on a stick though. Here come the Thunderbirds back the other way. Trying for a pass in the slot, they can't get on a friendly stick. Here's Rouleau, drop, passing it over, taking a shot that's blocked off. Jake Lee in behind the net. Pass out for Williams on his off wing. Dumps it in. Gallon will clear it around. Long pass up in the neutral zone. That's picked off by Lee. And Alexi Shank will cover up with 13 minutes left to go here in the first period. Shots are 3-2 to two currently for the UBC Thunderbirds. So a pretty defensive performance, but that is something we kind of expected going into this game. Absolutely, it's what we talked about pregame, Damien. And even then, we've seen McGill get a few chances from that top line. Walford made a nice full ice pass off the boards. One would think that could be icing, but according to the rules, it's not. It's the first to get there. And as a result, I believe it was Rouleau that almost had a chance. Yep. UO misses that offensive zone. Gallon makes a nice move in tight. Tries to jam it past Schwebe as he can't get it through. Zach Gallon with a beautiful move. Opening the game up a little bit. Number 21 does. Just couldn't bury it past number 60 on UBC. Let's get another look at it here. Nifty move by Gallant. He's got 39 points in 39 games. Exactly a point per game here this year. Tried to tuck it in between the legs of Schwebius and he was all over it. That's a, that's a big time save, especially this early in the first period and in the game. Yeah, Galan, a former AHL forward as well, draft pick of the Detroit Red Wings, like you mentioned. Second year player for the McGill Redbirds, as Kreisky will pick this one up on the left side. Dumps it in, pass Bavon. Going in the forecheck. Big hit by Pavon and Kreisky in the corner as they collide and land on top of each other. Keep in by the Thunderbirds there, but we got a hand pass called up against the home squad today, wearing the white jerseys as well. Jersey we don't see too often here in Toronto. Of course, the McGill Redbirds are in the OUA East Division, so maybe not as many games played against the TMU Bolts. 
as in their own division respectively but we got a big hit there a couple bodies colliding as things start to open up a little bit here at the Madden Athletic Center yeah you know we've seen in these quarterfinal games uh, in the U Sports Cup here they've been extremely physical as they should be these teams have their seasons on the line they're fighting for a chance to make the U Cup final and and uh, and earn their rights and their names on some banners and some trophies so you can expect the physicality to ramp up even more as the game goes on and at the end of the day it's a series of one game too so you really got to get to know your opponent and both teams will do that tonight Walford with a shot that goes off the bar almost opening up the score and another shot off the left side there in behind the net back up high Walford a D to D looking for a screen eye shot they can't get it through trying to jam it in they can't get it through. Off the stick of Mathieu Gagnon. UBC surviving that shift. Maybe the best sequence so far this game for the McGill Redbirds. As Rask will chip it up on the right side. UBC dumps it in. See if UBC can get some pressure here now. It feels like it's been mostly McGill. Applying the pressure, six shots to two, about halfway through this period. Ty Thorpe in on the four check there. 20 points in 29 regular season games. And Rask takes a shot that goes off the stick of Walford and into the netting as the shots currently are six to two for the UBC Thunderbirds. We still have a zero to zero score. So far in this national championship, we haven't had a super high scoring game i don't think you could expect that in this game here too like you look at last night tmu a two to one win over the calgary dinos they played 85 minutes of play and it was a it was a great game to call that with you as well we'll see what these two teams can do but i think you know at the end of the day i think both teams are going to buckle down defensively and in the end i think it's probably going to be a two one three one maybe with an empty netter sort of game yeah i think i would agree with that uh we were here pretty late last night in a tight uh tight seeded game between the four and the five seed um we look at this, this is a three versus six seed i think you're right we can expect the same thing these are two teams that are that are playing hard they're defensively sound as we as we mentioned countless times here tonight and uh it'll be uh it'll be exciting to see what uh who opens the scoring first we've seen walford get a chance we saw galan get a chance and uh ubc is looking to respond here Keon looking for a shot that can't get through. In on the four checks, Liam Kinry trying to put it back up high to Pouliot. The Redbirds clear it out. They got a chance here. It's Dumont dropping it back. Back for Dumont. Taking a shot off the post. A couple of posts so far this game for the McGill Redbirds. They just can't bury it past Cole Schwebius. Seems Schwebius should be thanking that post. Atkinson, a pass across. They try to put it back. And that's kept away, though, by Alexi Shank. What a defensive play by Zachary Gallant, getting the stick down on what would have been a wide-open net for the UBC forward, possibly opening the scoring here. That was a great play. Long pass from Noah Form. That can't get on a stick. No icing called on the play, however. UBC giving a nice response there on those last two shifts. McGill trying to get something going here after a couple of posts, including a crossbar as well a couple of minutes ago. Walford in, in the corner, dropping it off. They'll swing it back up high. McGill taking a shot towards the net, goes all the way over top of the net. Williams will corral this puck. Bouncing puck, and he'll just play it over for Sasha Mutala. Mutala chips it in. Going up against Forte, he nails the body there in the corner. Clearing it around now. Huo, back up high. Lee with the shot. That can't get through, hit a body. 9.20 left to go here in the first period. Lee drops it off. Williams looking for deflection. Puck on the other side. They couldn't get a shot off. This is oh big hit. A couple there. of bodies colliding there on the boards, it looks like. Stefan Wild giving a little shot at the end of the play there with nine minutes left to go here in the first period. Daly looking to drop it back. Kreisky now in the neutral zone looking for a man open but couldn't get on a stick. Miller 
Jake Lee back out there. Seems like I'm saying his name a lot tonight, and that will continue as well. Listen, Jake Lee, Scott Walford, these are two elite defensemen on these teams. We saw some good defensemen playing in the other quarterfinals, but I think in the tournament, they are some of the best. Offensively, uh, you got to watch out for them. They're, they're in the top uh, top uh, level in points on their team. Uh, they can really be a threat uh, either on the rush or from the point. They're dynamic on the blue line, as we saw Scott Walford hit the, hit the crossbar just a few minutes ago. I think we can expect them to get on the board here once the scoring opens up. Now we'll see when that does happen. Two very good defensive teams. Uba goes in behind the net. Pass up high. Belzeal, a little bit of room. Takes it. Can't get it through, however. A ton of bodies out in front on the UBC and McGill front. Rask will dump that in. Ford goes back to get it. Stops up. Plays it over for Belzeal. Uba pass in. The neutral zone, Frateroli pass over for Rouleau. He loses it, but gets it back. Rouleau on his off wing now, takes a shot. Uba takes one, and it goes off the post. That's three sequences so far in the first period, hitting iron. One crossbar, two posts. Cole Schwebius has to be pretty happy with this game so far, how that's working out for him. But a couple of fantastic chances for McGill. Yeah, listen, and two came from that top line of Rouleau, Frateroli, and Uba. They are wreaking havoc in the UBC end. Uh, it's only a matter of time until until one finds a back of the net, until one finds a twine. Both teams, their top six is, ex is extremely stacked, and UBC might have the depth scoring edge, I guess you could say, but when there's that many stars on these teams, it's a beautiful thing to watch and to have these two teams here at the Mattamy Athletic Center. It's a, it's a pleasure to have a couple of very good squads here in Toronto. Yeah, and, and listen, when you're playing in big games, you expect your big players to step up. And uh, we've seen that so far with uh, the UQTR game. One of their top guys had an exceptional game uh, before this at 1 o'clock. And I think we can expect in this game the top guys to show out for their squads. Douglas is one of those who just had the puck 26 points in 28 games. Giving a hit on Mathieu Gagnon there. With 6.20 left to go here in the first period. It's going by pretty quick. Ford playing it back. Long pass. We might have a chance here for the McGill Redbirds. Puck goes towards the net. Schwebe is keeping it out. Got a man down there. That's Stefan Huald in behind the play. Ford takes a shot looking for the flexion that goes wide. As Stefan Huald is very slow to get up. Going back the other way. It looks like he collided with Schwebe. Thunderbirds back. Coming in on a three-on-two. Can't get a play going there. Williams in the corner. Back up high. Shot towards the net. And a good kick save there by Shank. Ford falls in, the, in behind the net. Pass in the slot for Williams. He scores! UBC opens the scoring with 5.29 left to go here in the first period. I think it was pass that off in front. It might have been Swan, Sam Huo. What a goal, though. Nice finish. Who would have thought with all the chances McGill was getting that UBC would strike first? We'll get another look at it here. Just a nice pass in the slot, and that's hockey at the end of the day. Get a pass in the slot, take a shot, hope for a rebound. And Williams, Josh Williams, cashes in there, opens the score, and a huge goal. Of course, you're both technically away teams here as it's not your home rink, but you'll take the first goal of the game any day of the week if you're the UBC. Any day of the week. Big time goal there by Josh Williams. 6-3 forward, who's a large presence and really just used his size, speed, and uh, and a nice feed by Sam Huo off the rebound to, to tuck it in and, and uh, open the scoring in this game. Williams with 10 points in 22 games, so maybe not the highest score in the regular season, but put up four points in six games in the playoffs. Williams also a plus one in the regular season as the McGill Redbirds will look to rebound here. A couple of fantastic chances for them, and it's, it's pretty remarkable that none of those three posts went in. Maybe, you know, hockey's a game of inches at the end of the day, and they just couldn't bury it past Schwebius. Yeah, listen, I'm sure they're a little bit frustrated right now because of that. But I can imagine head coach David Urquhart 
keeping them composed, keeping them in this. He's been on the coaching staff for a while. He knows his players. Just telling them to keep grinding, keep throwing pucks on net, and eventually one's got to go in, hopefully before this period ends for the Redbirds. Wisbur trying to keep it in with 4.21 left to go. Josh Williams with the opening goal for the UBC Thunderbirds. As we have just under five minutes left to go here in the first period, we will be right back with more first period action here on CBC. Welcome back inside the Mattamy Athletic Center where it's the final quarterfinal match of the 2024 U Sports Men's National Championship here on UBC. The McGill Redbirds, led by head coach David Urquhart, find themselves down one to nothing at the current moment with 421 left to go in the first period. Shots are seven to six for the UBC Thunderbirds, and they're not a team that gives up a lot, and we'll see how they can try and lock down defensively against a very good offensive team in the McGill Redbirds. Yeah, listen, this game had a little bit of a slow start. We can feel the momentum ramping up here. Crowd's getting more into it. Pass by Huo, just backhands that past the net. Dumont will now circle up, trying to find Gagnon. He tips it in. Dumont goes to get it on Keon. Keon gives him a little bit of a shove. Gagnon and Mutala collide in the corner. Keon loses it. Gagnon battling for position in. Dumont back up high. Looking for a shot. It's Forte. Can't get it through. Blocked there by Pouliot. Williams, the goal scorer of this game. The lone one as well. Williams one-on-one. -on -one, trying to break past Belzeal. He can't get through. Williams now. Pass over. To Ty Thorpe. Shot towards that. Just goes over top. Lee loses it. We might have a chance here for the Redbirds. It's Dumont with Galant. Dumont pass over shot that just goes wide off the stick of Zach Galant. Dumont making a great pass there to Galant. Uh, at the end of a shift, you could tell his legs were burning. Was able to get that pass off and get a scoring chance just wide, unfortunately, for the Redbirds. CBC Sports is the home of University Sports. In Canada, catch the gold medal game of this 2024 University Cup live from Toronto on Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific on CBC Gem, CBC Sports.ca, and the CBC Sports app. U Sports on CBC. Chase the glory. Got just three minutes here in this game, or in this period, pardon me. I'm sure McGill wants to get an answer. They've had their chances, Damian. We've seen three posts. One was just on the outside, but two are those inside posts. Uh, just a two-on-one -on opportunity that was just wide there by Gallant on the previous play. They're, they're, they're pushing. They're pushing for one as they should be, and it's just you just want to have them keep going, not get too frustrated, and, uh, and try to finish this period off even strength. Uh, you got to wonder how they respond to that adversity because, yeah, they've been gaining some chances and everything, but you got to fight through, and especially when you only have one game to do so, We'll see how they can do, especially in these last couple of minutes here. If they can get a tying goal and go to the intermission with a 1-1 tie, I think they'll take that, especially being the sixth seed in the U Sports National Championship and being the technically away team tonight. So UBC chips that all the way down. Blanchard will go back to get it. Defenseman from Pelham, Ontario. 37 
points in 74 career OUA games for number seven. UBC coming back the other way. It's Chris Douglas in the corner, the captain of the squad. Long shot towards the net. That gets deflected. Doesn't get on net, though. Douglas up high, keeps it in. Goes past the stick of William Rouleau. And Liam Kindry will battle there in the corner as well. Puck goes out. Keon at the line looking for a deflection. He gets it, but they can't get it on net. Off the stick of Scott Atkinson. And Rouleau will break this one out. Ubo at the line. Offside is called at the last second with 1.37 left to go. Let's take a look at the starting netminders for these two squads. Cole Schwebius, the starting netminder, 9.05 save percentage in the regular season. One of the better ones in the Canada West division. Doesn't allow a lot of shots because of the way that the UBC Thunderbirds kind of conduct. They work well as a five-man unit and the most amount of shots this team allowed in the playoffs was 25 and in the regular season was 34. So you can definitely rely on them locking down defensively as this game goes on. Yeah, for sure. And UBC, their team that has two great goaltenders, their second string is Caden Lane. Uh, he's had seven wins on the year, three losses. Both of them, Lane just has under a 900 save percentage. Both are very good and, and both could have started this game. Uh, but it turns out it was Shrebius that got the start, and uh, he's playing pretty great so far, Damien. Belzeal drops it off. Ward back for Belzeal, looking for a pass in the slot. Not covered up by Shwebius. One minute left to go here in the first period. Pass over on the right side for Belzeal. He'll just tip it ahead. Jake Lee looking to jump in on the four check. Mathieu Gagnon. The great pass over to Gallon just a couple of minutes ago, almost tying the game up, but we still have a 1 0 lead for the UBC Thunderbirds. Chip ahead. Here's Mutala coming in with some speed, but Forte does a good job there in the corner, blocking him off. Keon in on the four check with 25 left to go. We got a stoppage of play here. Looks like I think it was a hand pass. There in the corners, we've got a couple of discussions between teams as we know that the rivalry isn't really dated and it's something that's going to be very new and it should be interesting to see if the physicality sort of starts to pick up and who's going to open up the gates a little bit as this game goes on. Yeah, and we've seen it happen in the previous games. It's only going to get more physical no matter how the teams are. We get another replay here at the stoppage. Walford just uh, saw a little hand pass there by the UBC forward. Walford pressuring him. But, yeah, you know, these are two teams that don't see each other. It's always tough when you play a team that you don't know what to expect. Obviously, you can scout and do the best you can, but you always got to play the game, and, and it's one of the stars. And even, and even the, the guys, the role players, come out to play and do their job. The seconds trickle down here in the first period of the fourth quarterfinal matchup of the 2024 U Sports Men's Hockey National Championship. We have a 1-0 lead for the UBC Thunderbirds. A pretty tidy piece of business for the home team, but the McGill Redbirds have to be pretty content with that period overall. Just as unfortunate for them that they're down one nothing. Yeah, I'm sure head coach David Urquhart is is pleased with their effort. Uh, three posts, not much you can do there. Like you said, hockey is a game of inches. You're going to get your chances. Just keep slugging on offense and on defense. Keep doing your job. Let your goalies see the shots and, and come into the second period ready to go. We'll be back here for our first intermission action here on CBC Sports. The one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. They don't do it for the likes. 
or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Change was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. It's that moment again. The one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais, quand toutes les chances sont contre toi, when you can't push one more second, chase the glory. Viseo. shares they do it for the fun of it for the thrill for the camaraderie for the memories cbc sports just because they love it the exchange was awesome yeah <laughs> fans check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. All right, and welcome back inside the Madame Athletic Center for the final quarterfinal matchup here of the 2024 U Sports National Championship on CBC for men's hockey. Damien Smith with Griffin Butler here for you today for the coverage. We got a 1 0 lead for the UBC Thunderbirds, a respectable period for the home team technically tonight. The McGill Redbirds down 1 0, but overall a pretty solid period by both teams. Yeah, you know, I feel like it was McGill that had the edge on chances. Although UBC is up one, you wouldn't think that just looking at the score. But McGill, like we saw, three posts, two uh, two crossbars and one post, uh, or two posts and one crossbar, rather. And here we'll see some highlights of the game. 
But uh, they kind of set the tone early. I would say McGill, very physical on the defensive side. And, and we're really bringing it to the UBC forwards as we see a UBC D crashing in the net there. Gallant with a nice move that uh, the UBC goalie just smothered there. But uh, overall, it's been a pretty balanced game, like you said. And it's UBC uh, leading right now, one nothing. Yeah, Cole Schwebius, pretty solid in the net, but gained help from a couple of posts. And on the other side, Alexi Shank going a perfect, or sorry, seven for eight in the save department on the McGill side. So a couple of good opportunities for both ends. Uh, I think both teams are starting to just like feel out what it's like to be playing against both these teams because they've never played against each other in the U Cup specifically before. And that's the lone goal tonight. Josh Williams with his first of the U Cup, of course, and had a goal in the Canada West playoffs, four points in that sequence as well. Maybe the best chance not being a post from Zach Gallant there, a great pass by Gagnon. And of course, you see Josh Williams with the lone goal with 529 left to go in the first period, getting the opening marker, which is oh so important for any team and no matter what competition they are in. Yeah, so important indeed. It was Adam Ho who gave a nice shot on uh, the McGill goaltender and Williams that tucked it away. Just one chance, a game of inches, that's all it takes, especially in a quarterfinal of this nature. These teams, don't forget, they haven't played in a long time. Uh, they're in a big setting, in a different setting, in Toronto here at the Mattamy Athletic Center. Uh, it's a lot to take in. I think that first period, like you said, they're really feeling each other out, and now I think we can expect a lot more action, a lot more physicality, and uh, a lot more chances on both sides. Should be very interesting, but let's take a look. Some of the U Sports winners here for Coach of the Year and Rookie of the Year. Here are the nominees for the Father George Kehoe Memorial Award as the 2024 Fox Sporty U Sports Men's Hockey Coach of the Year. Voici les candidats pour le prix commémoratif par Georges Quijot présenté à l'entraîneur de l'année Fox 40 U Sport. Des sports universitaires de l'Atlantique, from the AUS, Gardner McDougall, University of New Brunswick, Université du Nouveau-Brunswick. Du sport universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, TJ Ministerski, Université Brock University. Et de l'Association West Canadienne, from Canada West, Sven Boutenshan, University of British Columbia, Université de la Colombie-Britannique. Le lauréat du prix commémoratif par Georges Kehoe présenté à l'entraîneur de l'année Fox 40 U Sport est The winner of the Father George Kehoe Memorial Award as the 2024 Fox 40 U Sports Men's Hockey Coach of the Year is Gardner McDougall, University of New Brunswick, Université du Nouveau-Brunswick. The nominees for the Claire Drake Award presented to the U Sports Men's Hockey Rookie of the Year are A nomination pour le prix Claire Drake présenté à la recrue de l'année en hockey masculin U Sport 2024 des sports universitaires de l'Atlantique from the AUS Alec Bélanger, Université Dalhousie University du sport universitaire de l'Ontario from the OUA Connor Unger, Université Brock University et de l'Association West Canadienne from Canada West Jake Poole, University of Calgary Université de Calgary. Le lauréat du prix Claire Drake présenté à la recrue de l'année en hockey masculin U Sport est The winner of the Claire Drake Award as U Sports Men's Hockey Rookie of the Year is Connor Unger, Université Brock University. Champions from across the CJHL come to Oakville this spring for the 2024 Centennial Cup presented by Tim Hortons. For more than 50 years, this tournament has highlighted the best in Junior A hockey. Catch all the action live from May 9th to 19th at the 16 Mile Sports Complex. Tickets are available now at hockeycanada.ca slash Centennial Cup.
point and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline. Our passionate team unlocks a world of possibilities with digital broadcasting made simple, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. Proudly Canadian, ISI Live, be there. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Parce que le sport, c'est bien plus que des résultats. C'est aussi des analyses et des dossiers qui nous plongent au cœur de l'univers complexe et en mutation. C'est vraiment incroyable. Suivez les actualités sportives sur radiocanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. Champions from across the CJHL come to Oakville this spring for the 2024 Centennial Cup presented by Tim Hortons. For more than 50 years, this tournament has highlighted the best in Junior A hockey. Catch all the action live from May 9th to 19th at the 16 Mile Sports Complex. Tickets are available now at hockeycanada.ca slash Centennial Cup. and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline. Our passionate team unlocks a world of possibilities with digital broadcasting made simple, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. Proudly Canadian, ISI Live, be there. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Parce que le sport, c'est bien plus que des résultats. C'est aussi des analyses et des dossiers qui nous plongent au cœur de l'univers complexe et en mutation. C'est vraiment incroyable. Suivez les actualités sportives sur RadioCanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. U Sports on CBC, presented by Les Championnats U Sport à Radio Canada. Une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Fedler. Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre, partenaire des prix de l'entraîneur de l'année U Sport. Vera Burn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du sport universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U-Sports championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusive des bagues des championnats U-Sports. And welcome back inside the Madame Athletic Center here for the 2024 U-Sports National Championship in men's hockey. We got our final quarterfinal match of the day and for the last couple of days here with the UBC Thunderbirds and the McGill Redbirds right now. Damian Smith with Griffin Butler for you on the call as we gear up for the second period here. UBC with a 1-0 lead currently at the moment. Shots are 8-6. to six. McGill got the lone power play of the game, but UBC, it's a quick goal by Josh Williams in the middle of the first period that ended up being the first goal of the game. Yeah, you see there one penalty in the game, one power play for McGill where they couldn't capitalize. But it's been a physical game. We, we feel like we almost could have seen more penalties uh, called, uh, but there haven't been. But with that said, the physicality has been there. I think after these teams have got a feel for the game, got a feel for each other, it's going to be much more physical uh, in this upcoming second period. Yeah, the first period's always interesting, right? Because you don't really know a whole lot about each other. All of a sudden, you go back into the dressing room and you start talking with your players about who to match up against and your coach starts to give you a little bit of different assignments and everything like that. So it should be interesting to see how the physicality does increase. Let's take a look at some of the big hits in the first period that was on full display between these two squads here today, between the Battle of the Birds here tonight. Now you saw that was the first penalty, that first clip there. Big hit by Gallant as well. Just finishing checks. McGill's Ford is doing a great job and their defense of closing the space and really putting a body on, on every UBC player that they can. Oh, bit of a high hit there. 
Uh, thank Damien. Yeah, only one penalty called, however, and it was just a minute and a couple of seconds in from Sasha Mutali. That ended up giving McGill their lone power play of the game, and McGill with a couple of key opportunities, two posts, a crossbar. They just couldn't beat Schwebius and get the puck past him. So overall, a good performance by the away team here tonight. They only got six shots on net, but they still find themselves down one to nothing at the current moment. But CBC Sports is home of all university sports in Canada. The best U sports men's volleyball national championship of 2024 will be in Kingston, Ontario. Catch all of that action exclusively on all CBC platforms. It's U sports on CBC. Chase the glory. And both these teams will be chasing the glory with 20 seconds left to go before the puck drops here and we'll see how these two teams manage to play against each other maybe some things will change up we don't know about that but we do know that both these teams play very defensive games overall and we can probably expect that in the second period here yeah listen Damien we were talking about it over the break we've seen Shrebius for UBC the most shots he's faced uh, in the playoffs has been uh, 34 uh, so it'll be interesting to see if McGill's game plan changes a little bit, throw more pucks on net, test him a little bit more, maybe drive to those dirty areas and try to get uh, a screen in front of him so he can't see all these pucks because as of right now, he hasn't let much go. Good chance for Douglas there as he almost got a good chance breaking in on Alexi Shank. Eric Uba on the left side dumps it in for himself. Taken right away from Jake Lee. He'll break this one out by himself. Missed pass, however, onto the stick of Scott Atkinson. Kindry dumps it in. Out there with Douglas and Ak Atkinson. Atkinson goes off for a change. Sam Huo will come out there. Sam Huo, a little bit of a slow start to the game, but then we see him get a point in that first goal for UBC. Oh, and he gets a break here. Good chance here. Here's Huo taking a shot, and that's a good blocker save there by Shank. The first big one of the period. Huo back up high. Here's Pouliot taking a shot. No. Thought he was going to take it, but was a down low pass to Williams, the lone goal scorer of this game, if you missed it here on CBC. As they look to dump that one in, William Brulo does. 91 points in 76 career games the Quebec native has had for McGill University. Williams now up high, keeps it in at the blue line. Very close to being offside, but Mutala will circle up, passing it back up high. Screening eye shot, looking for a deflection. Puck is bouncing, and that's covered up by Alexi Shank. Alexi Shank doing a great job there to track the puck. It was tipped in front by Josh Williams, it seemed like, but he was able to track that down and uh, freeze it for a McGill faceoff inside their zone. 18.26 left to go here in the second period. Shots are currently 10 to 6 for the UBC Thunderbirds. Still with the lead here tonight, and they are very good defensively. But on the other end, of course, McGill, one of the best offensive teams in the entire OUA for pretty much the entire season. Unfortunately, just couldn't get a couple of goals against UQTR in the OUA East final, in the final four, and then, of course, beating Brock, which slotted them into the number six seed here in the U Sports National Championship. Yeah, and, you know, I think that's what makes this such an interesting matchup to watch, right? Because it's the top offensive team versus the top defensive team. I mean, you've always heard the old saying, good defense leads to good offense. So that's proven true so far tonight. But uh, still lots of hockey left to play. Jake Lee circles back to get it. Pass over for Lambos. Up on the right side. Looked like it just hopped over the stick of Rask. Ford now in behind the net. Fifth-year defenseman from St. Lazare, Quebec. Long pass goes all the way down the ice. We have an icing called against the Redbirds. But right now, it's not the only U Sports National Championship in men's hockey. We also got one going on over in Saskatoon at the moment. 
all the teams face off in the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Canuck Anchory in Saskatoon. You can catch all the action on all CBC platforms. U Sports on CBC, chase the glory. See Zachary Gallant taking the face off here. He's had a pretty impactful game so far for the Redbirds. He's been all over the ice. I feel like we've been saying his name a lot, Damian. Uh, he's a big presence there at center, standing six foot tall, or six foot two, rather. And we had a great chance there for Sashu Mutala, who on the back door, nice little one-timer pass in behind the net. A great chance there for number 34. He actually led the UBC Thunderbirds in shots this year with 106 in 28 games. Only put seven goals on the board, but we can expect him to take a ton of shots here tonight. Matt Coach Urquhart wasn't a fan of that opportunity. Did a full change there for the Redbirds forward line. Yeah, the Redbirds still need that tying goal here, and this line can do it. Eric Uba taking the shot. That just gets deflected wide. Big hit there on Puglia in behind the net. A very good shift so far by Eric Uba, who can put the puck in the back of the net, but is showing that physicality here in the second period as the UBC Thunderbirds just go offside there with 16.57 left to go here in the second period. Speaking of Eric Uba, can he ever put the puck in the net, but especially this year uh, on the power play. He's got nine power play goals for the Redbirds. That's why it was interesting to see UBC shut that period or shut that power play down in the first period. McGill can get another one. I expect Uba to be out there uh, for majority of it and, and trying to get his team back in this game at one apiece. So McGill still failing to get a shot on net in this period. Shots were 8-6 to six early in the first inning between these two squads and now it's 3 to nothing is the difference so far in the second period as we just hit the three minute mark here in the middle frame. Yeah, and it speaks to UBC's defense. Their, uh, their defense core keeps, is very solid, they're very deep. They keep good strong gaps, not giving anyone any chances. And, and speaking of that, I believe it's their top D pairing on right now with Jake Lee and John Johnny Lambos, pardon me. And the defense of the UBC Thunderbirds, it's interesting because there's a little bit of a drop-off. you got Jake Lee and Jonathan Smart as your top two scorers. Lee with 34 points in 28 games and Jonathan Smart with 22 points in 27 games. But then it's Johnny Lambos, the next one up, with eight points in 22 games. So a, uh, a couple of very high-flying offensive defensemen for UBC. And uh, Jake Lee, you could definitely expect him to be on the power play, on the penalty kill, and logging probably half the minutes here tonight for UBC. As he goes back to get it there, dumps it all the way down. Puck goes in on Shank, and he will cover up. We'll have a whistle to the right of him. We got a little bit of sh pushing and shoving between Captain Douglas and Ford there in the corner. Who's he shoving with there? Jake Lee. And he seems to be absolutely loving it. <laughs> Getting in, get himself into this game. You know, there's some players like that who love uh, the friendly interactions, you could say, Damien. Get them into the game a little bit more. Uh, put a little put a little something on the line, you could say. Especially when you don't really know the team you're playing against, right? It's hard to get that competitive. Well, yeah, you want to get right under away. their skin. And, you know, there's scouting reports and everything, but you don't know maybe the uh, the toughness of a team or the, the grittiness of a team and how pesky they can be from time to time, shift to shift. as a good chance here for the UBC Thunderbirds, but that's broken up. Ward will dump that in and behind the net. Puck bounces off the back. Big hit there by Stefan Ward, who was injured earlier in the first period. It's good to see him back out on the ice. Back up high. It's Prouse. Drops it off. Ward takes a shot that goes wide. Maybe a wraparound chance. They couldn't get it through, though. Off the stick of Forte. Ward in the corner. Takes a hit. And UBC should come out with it, and they do. As Ty Thorpe looks, looks to forecheck. McNabb picks it up, drops it off for Rask. He can't get on his stick. Forte back the other way in the neutral zone. Late in his shift, he'll just dump that one in. Nice shift by Ward and Forte there. Giving some opportunity, some shots on net for the McGill Redbirds. 
like you said, great to see him back after that injury. I'm sure he's got a bone to pick after one of those uh, late hits there, you could say, in the first. Yeah, good energy third line shift from Warred Forte and Gagnon. Got a first-year player, a second-year player, and a third-year player on the ice. So good little mix of experience and youth forming a good, solid third line for the McGill Redbirds as we almost have a turnover there from number 13, William Poirier. Miller will go back to get it for the Thunderbirds. He'll flip that one up, and Puck doesn't go out just yet. Held in at the line by Ford. Clears it around. Poirier in the corner now. Will battle alongside Johnny Lambos. Taken out, though. Maybe a chance here for the Redbirds. A shot. We have a delayed penalty on the play, and it's going to be going up against the Thunderbirds. So we'll have the second power play of the night for the Redbirds coming just right up. Now, Damien, this is the chance McGill's been waiting for. Percentages don't lie. They're just about 33%, I believe it was, on the power play. Let's see if they can go one for two tonight and, and tie this game up. They got, looks like their top line out there, Galan at center, Uba at left wing, Frateroli at right wing. We'll get another look at this penalty right here. Just a little hook inside from Carson Miller. And as a result, the Redbirds are on the power play. They'll set this one up. It's Walford over for Uba. He takes the shot. He had a little bit of room there on his left side. Just didn't hit the net. Walford up high. Holds the line. Looking for a pass. Takes a spill. Knocked down by Douglas. The Redbirds bench do not like that. As the refs get a little bit of an earful. Testy. Testy call there. If the ref were to call that. Very difficult to, to put a team on a five on three. We've We've seen the refs over the course of this will be the fourth game in the U Sports Cup this year. They're not really, they're letting a lot of stuff go, you could say. Well, elimination game on the line. Most of the time, they're not going to call those penalties you might in the regular yeah. season. As we got a hit there from Thorpe alongside the wall and Zach Galaw. And the Thunderbirds clear that all the way down into their own bench, actually. We'll see. I think we'll get a face-off down to the left of Cole Schwebius. So far, the Redbirds not really getting a chance to set anything up too cleanly. We see the second unit come out now. Looks like Milan staying out there. Oh, part of me, he's heading off now. Walford just couldn't really quarterback it. That shift, they couldn't really get a clean look, get a couple passes in a row. Got to give credit where credit is due. UBC's penalty kill is aggressive and, and solid, and there's not many holes. That's it. Gagnon will take that draw. He wins it. On the other side, we got a player knocked down there. It's Xavier Forte. Redbirds want to call once again. Don't get it. Pass across on the other side. Mathieu Gagnon will take it. He's got some room. Pass across, and they score! McGill ties it up with 13 minutes to go. It's Xavier Forte on the power play. What a goal. Talk about, talk about, they don't even need to set up the power play. They got that one on the rush, caught UBC on one side of the ice and switched it qu quickly. It was Mathieu Gagnon with a nice feed cross ice to Fortin to put it away. How about the second line power play answering the bell for the Redbirds? We got a 1-1 hockey game, Damien, with 13 minutes left. There's nothing better. The three versus the six seed. You love to see it. It's a whole new game now. And this is why a lot of teams in any hockey league will set up on their off wings for those one-timer passes through the seams. And Forte lines up perfectly there. And a great pass by Mathieu Gagnon on the left side. Coming in with a lot of speed. And we'll see how the Redbirds can use this momentum in their favor as they take another shot that goes over top of the net off the stick of Dumont. Momentum swinging in the Redbirds the Redbirds direction right now oh maybe a chance here Williams looking to break free taken away by Shank he'll just clear that out and out of play as the Thunderbirds argue for a penalty there Puck goes out of the just over the glass don't believe looks like there's going to be a minor penalty two minutes here Damien goalie interference now for those at home a player can shoot it over a goalie cannot similar to rules 
uh, in minor hockey and junior hockey as well. Get a replay look at it here for the fans. Goalie coming out, Alexi Shank making a gutsy play to get it out, but just a lack of uh, a lack of concentration or just trying to get rid of the puck a little bit too quickly, and he shoots it just marginally over the glass, and as a result, it's going to be possibly, the refs are talking here, possibly a power play for UBC. Well, I love that move by Shank, though. That's classic modern goaltending back in the 1980s, you know, the Grant Fuhr, Gretzky days. Most likely those goaltenders would have stayed in the net, but now you see goaltenders go back to play the puck pretty much every single shift. They want to get in the game, and when you're a team that is very good defensively like McGill and on the other side UBC and you're, you are Alexi Schwagen, Cole Schwebius, you want to start feeling the puck so that you feel like you're a part of the game because both these teams, like we said, are very good defensively, so a lot of pucks aren't really going to get on net because they work very well as a 5 man unit being very cohesive and uh two shots so far in this period for the mcgill redbirds but one goal and they will take that and i think that is pretty deserving as they will be headed off to the box now eric uba will serve the minor for alexi shank and the ubc thunderbirds will get their first power play of the game interesting decision to send uba there I guess he doesn't kill too many penalties for the Redbirds. Pass in the slot. They take a one-timer. Good set play by the Thunderbirds. Swing it up high. Mutala at the point. As Lee set up on the right side. Mutala. Lee one-timer. No. Not in. He's celebrating. Ref blows it off. We'll see what happens from that. I think that went in as well as that puck went in and out. No matter what, we'll take a look at it. Long shot towards the net. They get a rebound. And Mathieu Gagnon will clear it out all the way down the ice. Long stretch pass from Schwebius picked off. However, Gagnon, and they got an offside call against Zach Gallant as he slams his stick on the ice. Talk about a sequence, Damien. Oh, my goodness. We got goalies coming out to play the puck and almost costing two goals. But first, let's talk about this chance here by Jake Lee. It, we'll get another look at it shortly. I do not believe it went in. I think the ref made the right call. Super tough to tell. We'll get a chance to look at it right here. Wow. That looks like it goes in. That's it celebrating. He thought it was in, and I don't think that's going to count at the current moment. We got no goal on the play as the referees wave it off new addition to the Madame Athletic Center. We have the overhead net cam. Didn't see it on that replay, but the refs do have access to it, and from that angle it's, uh, it's obvious that it didn't cross the line, but what a sequence. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Jake Lee thought that was in 100% of the time. Elected to celebrate right away, but <laughs> the, uh, the UBC Thunderbirds will get another crack at this here. In behind the net as they work it around. Back up high, Mutala. Here's Douglas. One-timer by Mutala. I believe that grazed the post potentially at the point. Mutala, here's Lee. Will he score? A good blocker save there by Shank. Huo sets it up. Mutala on the right side. Here's Jake Lee. One-timer coming up. No, doesn't elect to shoot. Lee takes it, looking for a deflection out front. They can't get on net. Mutala now. Keeps it at the blue line. He switches with Lee. Takes a shot. Can't get it through. Blocked at the line by McGill. But they have lost a sick now. A deflection out in front. Caught by Alexi Shank. A great period for the starting netminder for the McGill Redbirds. As he has gone a perfect 10 for 10 in the save department. Yeah, he's had a busy period for sure, Damien. I want to highlight that big block there by Charles Antoine Dumont. That was a big block, ended up breaking his stick, and and uh, as a result, keeping the puck out of the net was Alexi Shank. Get another look at this replay here. From the shot, as you can see, right hits off the that bar. top bar, which is a pretty crazy angle. You don't really see a puck bounce that way off the bar. And uh, quite the celly there from Jake Lee. It's I something about it. it's something about that side of the rink with the posts and the crossbars because we've had, I think, five of those. You saw Mutala just graze the post there as, you know, it wasn't maybe as a flashy of a play. You didn't hear the ding off the post there, but something about this end of the rink has been pretty crazy 
when the puck has hit the yarn, and we're not even halfway through this game. So we got a tie game here, and it's been a good one between the UBC Thunderbirds and the McGill Redbirds. Yeah, it's just got to be a magnet over there or something. Five posts, you don't, you don't see that often at all. On one side of the ice, yeah, too. Wow. Ford will go back to get it. He turns it over. Thorpe looking for a shot towards the net. Can't get it through. Puglia takes a hit from Eric Uba out of the box. And the Redbirds will set this one up. Belzeal, long pass. Uba looking to wind in. Offside called on the play as Uba looked like he was extremely close there with 10.08 left to go here in the second period. Just a little extra move at the line uh, by Gagnon, forcing Uba offside slightly as we'll get another look here. Uba trying to get over with speed. Was very close. We got that nice replay. Shout out to the broad broadcast crew in the back doing a great job getting that shot. Uh, but it's going to be offside and McGill. Uba's going to stay on and McGill's going to keep going here. Lee dumps it in. Go back to get it. It's Pavon. As we hit the halfway mark in this quarterfinal match between the UBC Thunderbirds and the McGill Redbirds. Got Jake Lee right back out there. Does coach Sven Butenshawn put his star guy out there? You can tell he, he wants a goal, especially after that crossbar. Nice move by McNabb. He breaks around, takes a shot, gloved away by Alexi Shank as he was going from post to post, but at the last second, slid over there and just caught that puck very nicely. Great, great save there. You saw Alexi Shank even starting to lean over to that right side. Kind of gave up the net a little bit, uh, but he was able to grab it with the glove. Great reaction, great save uh, by Alexi Shank. So we have a one-to-one -one score here midway through the second period. It's a quarterfinal match between the McGill Redbirds and the UBC Thunderbirds here on CBC. Vous avez le pouvoir de provoquer le changement au sein de notre climat. And welcome back inside the Madden B Athletic Center. We got a one-to-one -one score here in the final quarterfinal match of the U Sports National Championship for men's hockey between the McGill Redbirds and the UBC Thunderbirds. The Battle of the Birds here at the Madden B Athletic Center. Shots are currently 10-2 to in this period for the home team in UBC, but have failed to get on the board on the other side of the McGill Redbirds. Tied the game up, a goal from Xavier Forte on the power play. One for two on the night, the McGill Redbirds are and have carried the bulk of the play, at least on the offensive side of things here in the second period. But the UBC Thunderbirds have done a good job at responding and putting a lot of pucks on net towards Alexi Shank, but he has stood very tall here in the U Sports quarterfinal. As Stefan Ward will clear that around, back up high. Walford keeps it in on his offside as a defenseman. That's always hard to do. Pass over. Walford down low in the slot. Gagneau takes a shot. A good save there by Schwebius to keep that puck out of the net. Yeah, I wasn't sure if Sasha Mudelak got a piece of that with his glove. It looked like he tried to, but very good opportunity there by McGill. They got set up in the zone there. And a nice feed by Walford. Gagneau loses that. Jake Lee off the boards. Not out, though. Belzeal keeps it in. And Belzeal will pass it over for Ford, his D-man partner. Ford just dumps that all the way in. Lambos loses it. Whoa, will clear that out, though. Belzeal in the neutral zone now. 
Dumped in by Drew Ben as he takes a body. Lambos takes a big hit there as well from Caden Daly as the physicality is picking up here for McGill's fourth line. Who, taking a shot, it's Uba. Great chance there as Daly takes a hit from Lambos as well. All of a sudden, physicality picking up a lot here on both sides of the puck. Some big hits, like you said, on both sides. Caden Daly throwing the body for McGill, getting back at Adam Quo for what looked like a late hit. But this is playoff hockey, man. This is playoff hockey, and that's the best type of hockey, no matter what sport it is, as UBC touches the puck, and they will be called for too many men. They do not like it. That's Keon at the line, touching that puck. Ben Keon, but an unfortunate error for the away team, or sorry, the home team, and the McGill Redbirds will get another shot at this, scoring on the power play. Just a couple of minutes ago, Xavier Forte, they'll get another crack at it. That is a mistake you do not want to make in this game, especially with two teams that are so excellent in the special teams. We're getting a we're gonna get a replay here. It is clear as day. One, two, three, four, five, six, Damian. And now we got power play one for McGill back on. And here's Uba on the left side. One timer coming. No Walford as they throw a couple of fakes. Rouleau stops up. Stick handling up high. Walford. Uba taking a shot that goes wide. Walford looking to keep it in. He does. Plays on the hash mark. Rouleau takes a hit. Back for Walford at the line. Looking for deflection. That just goes off a stick and out in front. Off the stick of Zach Galon, who just deflected that up and into the netting. Great look by Walford. An even better pass, I would say, by William Rouleau on that side wall. As he's getting pressured, dishes it to Walford. Walford looks off. Uh, the fellow McGill Redbird on the left side here and then looks back door to Galan. Very close. That didn't go in. Good set play, and we'll see what they can do in the next 90 seconds here on the power play. Walford, one-timer coming up by Rouleau. He scores! Tipped out in front. It's Zach Galan, and the Redbirds have the lead with seven minutes left to go. Zach Galan had the opportunity just about 10 seconds before that. Goes in and makes a big time play on a much needed power play goal. They're sticking to their percentages, Damian. We'll get another look at it here. Just a nice, simple one timer. That's the power play at the end of the day. You can see why this team was very good on the man advantage this year. First in power play goals, 34 in 28 overall games. A very cohesive unit, and they work it around very well five offensive threats on both units and they have really showed up so far this game. Interesting to see how Coach Fenn Butenshawn gets his team to respond to this adversity. You saw Adam Ho just on that uh, whoa, pardon me, just on that last play slamming his stick. He wants the puck. He wants to get his team back into this game. A big momentum shift here. We get another look at the goal right here. Just no chance for Shrebius to see that puck. And as a result, we got a 2-1 game. Two goals on nine shots, Damien. Yeah, but that was also a deflection out in front from Galland. So, threw Schwebias off a little bit at least. So, an unfortunate turn of events here. But Mutala's got an opportunity. He shoots that puck. Goes off of Shank. Looked like the puck hit the netting maybe. But Hua will pass it across. A shot going over top of the net. Off the stick of Ben Keon. Williams now swinging it down low. Mutala in behind the net. UBC looking for a response here. Mutala spins. S spins again back up high. Taking a shot towards the net. They can't get it through off of Puglia. McGill chops it ahead and into the neutral zone as we got six minutes left to go here in the second period. Score is 2-1 to one for the McGill Redbirds despite being Outshot 19 to 9 currently at the moment. They still find themselves up one here in the quarterfinals. The winner of this game will play the UQTR Patriots in the semifinal. Belzeal will play it over for Taylor Ford. As McGill 
Turning the puck over here. Kept in at the line by Lee. Has a great opportunity. Takes a shot that just goes wide. Great chance there for number 24 on UBC. Ward loses it. Picked off, however. Coming in stride, it's UBC. A nice move in the slot. Looking for a pass over for Thorpe. That was Kreisky. Kept in the line at, by Lee. He fumbles it. Maybe an opportunity for McGill. Three on two. Lee loses his stick. And it looks like we'll have a penalty called up against Xavier Forte. Kind of throwing a pick there in the near the blue line. CBC Sports is the home of University Sports in Canada. The best U Sports women's volleyball teams head to Hamilton for this week's 2024 U Sports Women's Volleyball Championship. Catch the action exclusively on CBC Gem, CBC Sports.ca, the CBC Sports app, and CBC Sports YouTube. So we saw one penalty called in the first period. I believe now four in the second period. Refs are, are not letting as much go testing out these special teams as we both know both teams have uh, at a very good caliber great forward check here by the McGill forward Mathieu Gagnon yeah you're seeing the momentum swing in the Redbirds favor but UBC are known to put the puck in the back of the net and we'll see what they can do in the last four and a half minutes here Keon playing it over a shot good kick saved there by Shank kept in however Kindry back for Keon Williams. Back for Kindry with the shot. And nice save once again. Thorpe, second unit out there for UBC. Plays it back up high. Kindry thought about it. Takes it. That's blocked. A great block there out in front from Taylor Ford. Here's Keon. Pass over. Kindry takes one. Goes wide. Williams switches with Keon at the line. Over for Kindry. Down low, looking for the tip, they score! It's a man out in front, and the UBC Thunderbirds have tied it up. It's Tian Rask. Tian Rask in great position there. McGill defense, clearly struggling there. It was Mitchell Prouse that blocked that shot. He was caught a little bit out of position as he's laboring that right leg. Good job by UBC to capitalize on that opportunity and tie this game at two apiece. We've seen two power play goals uh, that have been huge here in this game. The man advantage has definitely played a huge factor this game. And a couple of unfortunate penalties on both sides of the puck. You see the too many men penalty for the UBC Thunderbirds just a couple of minutes ago. And that little bit of a pick from Xavier Forte getting a little bit too excited at the blue line. Gain the way of Jake Lee and ultimately the UBC Thunderbirds. They can always cash in whenever they want on the power play. Same thing with the McGill Redbirds as the man advantage, like you said, has been a big focal point of this game. I think, you know, you're talking about two very good defensively sound teams. So when they get that opportunity, they have to take advantage of the extra player on the ice. Yeah, and listen, that's that's what makes a great hockey team, especially in the playoff setting, in a setting like U Sports, win, and, win or go home. You have to capitalize on chances that you're given. And if a team's going to take a silly penalty, uh, such as a too many men or, or a pick like that, you can expect good teams and championship winning teams to capitalize on it. And so far, we've seen both UBC and McGill do that here tonight. So we got a tie game now back and forth a little bit as we maybe have a turnover here. A good rebound, however, there by Nicholas Pavon. Radarelli taking the puck out, and here's William Rouleau chipping into the corner. Breaking past Lee. Radarelli pass up high. Here's Ford back down low. Radarelli back for Ford at the left point. Looking for a deflection, looking for the bank. Rouleau takes a spill in behind the net. And Josh Williams will bring this one back out and bring it back to the D men. With three minutes left to go here in the second period. Three minutes left to go, Damian. Like you said, each team wants to do their best here, not to give up an opportunity late in the game to get the momentum or to lose some momentum. You want to go into this third period, even a piece if you can, and uh, and get a chance to regroup, talk to your coaches, and establish a game plan here. But you don't want to give anything up late, that's for sure. 
We'll see if we get another overtime game for us, but we still have 23 minutes left to go. So, yeah. Double OT. Double OT. <laughs> 7 o'clock start, too. Not in the afternoon, so maybe we'll have another 11 p.m. end of a game, which was a thriller last night between TMU and the Calgary Dinos. Long shot going towards the net. Just goes past Schwebius. Mathieu Gagnon with an assist on the night. Plays a back up high. Blanchard looking for the tip. Gagnon looking for the one-timer across for Galon. Walford down low. Gagnon waits, waits. Back up high. One-timer goes wide from Blanchard. He had a lot of room there. Walford looking for a shot. Deflected in front. Gagnon, a great shift here for the Redbirds. Blanchard, one-timer coming. And that's gloved up by Schwebius in front of the net. With 1.49 left to go here in the second period, McGill's probably best sequence of a shift here in this middle frame. For sure, best sequence of the period, you could say. We'll get another look at this goal here by UBC. Just a little tip backdoor. Like you said, McGill defenseman caught slightly out of position and a wonderful feed there, honestly. So that it was announced that Josh Williams got the goal, but I think Tian Ras touched it. It's possible Ty Thorpe, he was in the slot as well. Liam Kindry also could have got it as well because he just sent a simple shot on net, hoping for a, a deflection out in front. We'll see how that gets sorted out as this period trickles down, but we still got a, a big sequence for both squads here in the later stages of the second period. With 1.40 left to go, 100 seconds left on the clock. What will happen here between the Battle of the Birds here in the quarterfinal? <laughs> Big hit there. Gagnol. Walford almost threw the UBC forward into the bench. Gagnol, pass over. Forte, who's got one of the goals tonight. Ward there on the forecheck on Lee. Hounding number 24, and they'll just clear this all the way around. Ford going back to get it. Pass across for Belzeal. Almost turns it over. And Ward will try this once again. As we hit the one minute mark here in the second period. Two to two is the score between UBC and McGill here in the quarterfinals. UBC doubling in the shots in this game. 22 to 11. Three goals in this second period as well. All on the power play as well. As Ford will play it back there for Thomas Belzeal, the second pair out there for McGill. Long pass on the right side. Pass over here is Rouleau. He takes a shot, and that's covered up by Cole Schwebius. Schwebius all over that shot on the blocker side. We've seen that blocker side get targeted a little bit by the Redbirds. Saw Schwebius had a, a shot saved or tipped by one of his defensemen earlier, earlier in the game, and even before that, one went off his knob. Don't know if McGill's going there, but Shrubia seems to be all over it on that blocker side at least. Good chance here for the Redbirds coming up. Maybe one more opportunity if they can keep this puck in the offensive zone, and they do not. So they chip it out. The, the Thunderbirds do. Kindry plays it over for Douglas. Captain in the corner. Getting it over for Kindry. He loses it. Taken away by Walford. Puck goes in the neutral zone. Long shot on Shank. Will he cover it up? He elects to do so, so the Thunderbirds will take that, right? Eight seconds left to go. You got a small play coming up. You got to wonder who they send out to win this very important draw. Take a guess who UBC sending out on D. Yeah, yeah, of course. Jake Lee. Yes. <laughs> He's got one of the fake goals in this game. Yeah. Thought, he, thought he got one earlier on, midway through the period, but we thought it was in, too. I'm not going to lie, and there was a lot of proof there. That puck came in and out very quick and was already hitting the celebration, but the UBC Thunderbirds had to claw their way back into this game, and they look to get the 3-2 marker here, but the puck will go out as Huo sends a man into the bench here. As we got a 2-2 game between the UBC Thunderbirds and the McGill Redbirds here, finishing off a very... Back and forth second period between these two squads here in the final quarterfinal match of the U Sports National Championship for men's hockey. We got more action coming up in the third period. It should be a great one. We'll be right back here with second intermission coverage on CBC Sports. It's that moment again. 
the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. The exchange was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. It's that moment again, the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. The exchange was awesome. Yeah. <laughs>
Esports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. All right, everyone, and welcome back inside the Madame Athletic Center. And in the middle of the second period here between the McGill Redbirds and the UBC Thunderbirds, we're just a couple of minutes away from third period action right now, but we got a tie-tie game right now, score at two apiece between these two squads. Yeah, uh, that was an eventful second period, to say the least. Lots of power plays, which we didn't see in the first period. And uh, as we talked about before, they're going to capitalize. These teams are going to capitalize on those chances. Here are some highlights from that second period. A nice save there by the McGill goaltender. Great yep. chance there for Mutala, who got a couple of shots so far in this game. Physicality started to pick up a little bit, but a great pass here across to Xavier Forte on the back door. And then, of course, things just continue to happen. But Jake Lee thought he had that, but it hit the post or the crossbar, actually. There's something about that end of the rink that ends up not going in the net. A lot of pucks off the iron there on that side of the rink but a couple of great chances there Alexi Shank I thought was one of the better players in this period making a ton of key stops right now for the McGill Redbirds and the power play however for the Redbirds proved to be a significant margin in this game a one-timer there tipped by Zachary Gallant in front of the net but then of course a late tying goal we don't know who did get that. We'll get to take a look at the scoring summary. It actually was Tian Rask who tied it up very late in that second period. Yeah, you look at that period, three power play goals for Tan and Gallant for McGill and Rask getting that one in front uh, a bit later on in the second period. Uh, it's going to be exciting to see what we expect in this third period. Are there going to be more power plays? Are the referees going to kind of tuck the whistles away and let this game be decided five on five? Uh, but to say the least, it was still a very physical period, if not more physical, uh, wouldn't you say, Damien? And maybe we'll get overtime. We could. Possibly we could. get overtime. It's very could be, possible. Could be another late night here at the Madame Athletic Center. Yeah, we'll, we will see. There's a ton of great players in this game between UBC and McGill, but there was a ton of great player awards that were awarded. Let's take a look at the Community Player of the Year as well as the Player of the Year awards given out. The nominees for the Dr. Randy Gregg Award for the student who excels in hockey, academics, and community involvement are Les candidats pour le prix Dr. Randy Gregg pour l'excellence dans le hockey, les études, et l'engagement communautaire sont Des sports universitaires de l'Atlantique, from the AUS, Alec Belanger, Université Dalhousie University. Du sport universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, Alexandre Gagnon, Université McGill University. Et de l'Association Ouest Canadienne, from Canada West, Dawson Holt, University of Saskatchewan, Université de la Saskatchewan. Le laureat du prix Dr. Randy Gregg pour l'engagement communautaire est the winner of the Dr. Randy Gregg Award for Community Service is Alexandre Gagnon, Université McGill University. The nominees for the Senator Joseph A. Sullivan Trophy as the U Sports Men's Hockey Player of the Year are En nomination pour le trophée du Sénateur Joseph A. Sullivan, présenté à l'athlète de l'année U Sport en hockey masculin, des sports universitaires de l'Atlantique, from the AUS, Austin Keating, University of New Brunswick, Université du Nouveau-Brunswick, du sport universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, Simon La France, Université du Québec à Trois-Rivières. UQTR, et de l'Association West Canadienne, from Canada West, Connor Bouchard, Université Mount Royal University. Le lauréat du trophée Joseph A. Sullivan décerné au joueur de l'année en hockey masculin U Sport est the winner of the Senator Joseph A. Sullivan Trophy as the U Sports Player of the Year in men's hockey is Connor Bouchard, Université Mount Royal University.
awards given out to some great players for a ton of great U Sports athletes. We will be back with third period action coming up very shortly here on CBC Sports. Champions from across the CJHL come to Oakville this spring for the 2024 Centennial Cup presented by Tim Hortons. For more than 50 years, this tournament has highlighted the best in Junior A hockey. Catch all the action live from May 9th to 19th at the 16 Mile Sports Complex. Tickets are available now at hockeycanada.ca slash Centennial Cup. and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline. Our passionate team unlocks a world of possibilities with digital broadcasting made simple, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. Proudly Canadian, ISI Live, be there. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Un regard unique sur l'humain derrière l'athlète. Exploiter mon potentiel maximum, c'est un truc de fou. Découvrez les récits numériques et vidéos de Podium sur RadioCanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. Champions from across the CJHL come to Oakville this spring for the 2024 Centennial Cup presented by Tim Hortons. For more than 50 years, this tournament has highlighted the best in junior A hockey. Catch all the action live from May 9th to 19th at the 16 Mile Sports Complex. Tickets are available now at hockeycanada.ca slash Centennial Cup. and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline. Our passionate team unlocks a world of possibilities with digital broadcasting made simple, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. Proudly Canadian, ISI Live, be there. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Un regard unique sur l'humain derrière l'athlète. Exploiter mon potentiel maximum, c'est un truc de fou. Découvrez les récits numériques et vidéos de Podium sur RadioCanada.ca et sur la ligne. U Sports on CBC, presented by Les Championnats U Sport à Radio Canada. Une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the Government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Fettner. Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre Partenaire des Prix de l'Entraîneur de l'Année U Sport. Vera Burn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du Sport Universitaire depuis 1969. Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusive des bagues des championnats U Sport. And welcome back inside the Manabee Athletic Center for the final quarterfinal match of the U Sports Men's National Championship for men's hockey on CBC. Damian Smith, Griffin Butler here for you. 
Minutes away from third period coverage coming up. We have a tie game at two between the UBC Thunderbirds and the McGill Redbirds right now. A very good period overall for UBC in terms of the shot department, but McGill actually out outscoring them two to one in the middle frame. Yeah, I mean, you took a look at that period and even the shots in the game in total, 23 for UBC, 12 for McGill. It wouldn't look as though the game would be 2-2 although McGill able to capitalize on two power plays that period. Here we get a chance to look at some statistics from the game so far. We saw those power play points move up. Uh, McGill being two for three on the power play, pardon me, and UBC being one for two. Penalties we saw for that period for each team. And then, like we said previously, the shots, 23 for UBC and 12 for McGill. And a couple of tough penalties that I think that the coaching staff won't be very happy about right with the too many men call against UBC the McGill Redbirds end up scoring off of a Zach Gallant tip and then of course UBC tying it up very late off of a Xavier Forte little pick at the offensive blue line that he wasn't very happy about but the UBC Thunderbirds do a good job at responding at the end of the second period. So we got a tie-tie game here between these two squads here, and it's going to be a very good third period coming up. But let's take a look at the physicality that was very obvious in the second period, especially from McGill's fourth line. Yeah, you could really tell it ramped up there. Uh, it's fair to say these teams are making friends with each other on the ice, especially, like you said, that fourth line. A couple high hits, a couple late hits. Uh, like that there, but the refs are only calling the real obvious stuff, but the physicality is what you love to see in games like this. we got an even hockey game. Uh, the physicality always brings out brings out a, a factor in the game of hockey that can't be measured by skill. At some point, you got to be willing to, to put your body on the line uh, as a team, and especially as a team that's looking to win the championship. you got to be good in all aspects of the game, and so far, both of these teams have accepted that. And, uh, and done well to be physical. CBC Sports is home of university sports all around Canada. The best U Sports men's volleyball teams battle for the 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball Championship from Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario. Catch all the action exclusively on all CBC platforms. U Sports on CBC chase the glory. And both these teams are gearing up for a very good set period for the third period coming up. Shots are 23 to 12 for the UBC Thunderbirds and power plays have been the story of the game overall for both teams going 3 for 5 on the man advantage combined at least you could say so you gotta wonder how the referee is going to dictate this third period are they going to allow uh, a softer call here or there or are they just going to really call maybe the ones the, the clear delay of games, the too many men's, the obvious tripping penalties. It's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah, if I were to guess, I think they're going to tuck the whistles away here in this third period. Let this game, especially a game of this caliber, a quarterfinal in the U Sports Cup, let it be decided by the best team. And that team should be decided by five on five, I would think. But like you said, if it's obvious, if teams are going to take silly penalties and things like that, the refs have to be forced to call it. Redbirds pressuring here. Pass out in front. Can't get through on a stick. Thunderbirds coming back the other way. Shot towards the net. That's kicked away by Shank. Off the stick of Douglas. Douglas in the corner. Pack goes up high. Buck goes all the way around. Dumont looking to chop it ahead. And here is Jake Lee. Pass across. Can't get on the stick of Josh Williams. Who's got one of the goals tonight for the UBC Thunderbirds. A wraparound by Douglas. Can't get it through. Puck goes all the way down the ice. Will we have icing called against the Redbirds? Yes, we do. Sharp save there by Alexi Shank. Being ready for the puck coming out of the corner by Douglas and, and able to make that save. CBC Sports is home of the University Sports in Canada. Catch all the U Sports women's hockey teams as they face off in the 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy in Saskatoon. The action continues tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern on CBC Gem, CBC Sports.ca, the CBC Sports app, and CBC Sports YouTube. As we are one minute away, 
sorry, one minute in this third period. Tip out in front. Close one there for the Thunderbirds. Dropping it off for Lee at the hash marks. Looking for a pass in front. Can't get it through. That's blocked off by Mitchell Prouse. Here's Zach Galan. He'll just flip that into the UBC end. And over the boards for McGill comes their top line. Frateroli, Rulo, and Uba. See if they can make something happen early on with the fresh ice in this third period. Have it go on the board. Five on five, but have set up some good plays. Pass in front, a deflection in front. The puck was in and over the line. However, the ref blows it off. McGill does not like it. A very interesting sequence as it looked like we had a whistle. The puck was underneath the pads and through the legs of Cole Schwebius. But it looks like it will be a no goal on the play as Captain Taylor Ford now talks to the referees. Yeah, uh, it's a very interesting sequence just as we were talking about that top line in Rouleau, Uba. And uh, pardon me, just looking at a chance at this goal. And Frateroli, uh, they throw a puck on net, a weird bounce uh, in the in the way of Schwebius and and uh, it, we're gonna get a we're gonna get a call from the referee here soon. Saw that replay there. Yeah, from the overhead play, it looked like you know we couldn't see it there, but we saw from our vantage point. I think it did cross the line, but I think it was maybe a, a, an early whistle, right? And then obviously the puck goes over the line, and your instinct is to say, "Hey, that's in the net. That's in the net." And uh, can't blame McGill for that one, but they will rebound here with 18:15 left to go in the third period. McGill is still struggling to get a lot of shots on the net, but we talked about UBC just playing a good defensive game overall, not allowing a lot of rubber to hit the net overall, but we'll see what McGill can do here as Uba stops up. That's a good defensive play there by Tian Rask, who has the tying goal of this game late in the second period on the power play with a nice tip out in front that equalized the game up at two. Long dump in by... The McGill Redbirds, Taylor Ford dumps it in. A big hit there by Eric Uba. Throwing some physicality out there tonight. A big hit there by Ward. Picked off by Smith, though. Drops it off to Rask. Looking to find McNabb, but picked off. Maybe a chance here for the Redbirds back the other way. It's Stefan Ward. Takes a hit, takes a shot. And we got a man hitting his own goaltender in front of the net. It looks like it was Noah Form sliding into Schwebius, knocking the net off its moorings. And we'll get a stoppage of play. I think we will have a whistle and a face-off to the left of Schwebius as Form takes a spill and goes into his own netminder there. Yeah, you saw Stephen Huard have a chance there, doing a good job of absorbing the contact by Form, bouncing off him and then trying to get a second chance opportunity against Schwebius. Unfortunately, Net was knocked off, and the faceoff's going to be inside for this third line of McGill. Good start for the Redbirds. They've, they've, they've been applying pressure. So fourth line will go out there for the Redbirds right now. Bennett loses that out there with Caden Daly and William Poirier on the left wing. Rass takes a cross check from Walford, and the Redbirds will be set to redo this. Long pass, looking for deflection. Uba might have a chance here, but Puck was a little bit too far away. Looking for a pass in the slot. Can't find it. Here's Douglas. Dumps it in. Takes a big hit from Mitchell Prouse. And Douglas is down on the ice. The UBC Thunderbirds do not like that at the moment. Just a couple of minutes into the period here. That was a rough looking play. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, that's, that's a scary hit. You hate to see that in any hockey game at any level. It was near the stanchion of... The McGill bench, just unfortunate timing, and and very luckily, UBC player is getting up and seems to be all right with the help of the trainer. So very Douglas will go off. That's a tough loss too, right? That's your captain. That's a player you really want to play for. And, you know, he was the first player to lift the cup over his head when they beat the Calgary Dinos. And a key player for the team. 26 points in 28 games. Yeah, that's that's something you hate 
to see even had a game-winning goal in the playoffs for UBC. Hope he's okay and is able to return to this game. Refs are discussing over here, uh, I believe maybe where this face-off should be, either inside the McGill zone or outside. As of right now, the players are lined up outside. And I would like to point out, to those stanchions there at the end. Uh, you obviously can't see on the broadcast here, but the blue stanchions out there, they got a nice little cover around, and that is where the hit was made on Chris Douglas there. So, a, a obviously a rough play there, but I think, you know, that little bit of a cover there ended up preventing an uh, a even worse injury potentially. But... Cole Schwebis has been uh, pretty solid here tonight and made a couple of key saves. Has had some help from the iron a little bit. But uh, McGill, when they, they got some shots towards the net, he has been there for the test and has put up some pretty impressive ones tonight. Most definitely. You know, he has been tested uh, with the help of some post in the second period. Other than that, in the first and third so far, he's been outstanding. Not many rebounds given up, even when he hasn't been able to see the puck at all times. Uh like we said earlier, the McGill Redbirds, they've been looking for that blocker side, and he's been, for the most part, smothering it up, with the exception of some, some power play goals, where there's not much he can do about it. But he's been outstanding. So has Alexi Schenk for McGill, uh, saving 25 shots tonight. It uh, is truly outstanding, and he's keeping his team in this game. And it looks like we're about to resume play here after that scary hit. Schwebius in... Uh playoffs and regular season has a total record of 17-2-2 and so he knows how to get the job done in the winning department but Alexi Shank also really knows how to win his games on his own as well with the McGill Redbirds with one of their most successful seasons in history with a 21-7 and record good for first in the OUA East Division and here we have a tie game between these two squads and we're awaiting the third goal for either team. We'll see who steps up. Chris Douglas currently out of the lineup right now. We'll see what happens and if he does come back into this game. We just hope he's okay. Ford pass across looking for a one-timer off of the stick of Dumont. He couldn't get a shot on net. That yeah, was a great diving play by Carson Miller. For UBC, the 5'10 forward out of Yorkton, Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan, pardon me. Using every inch to get back in the defensive end to break up that pass. And those are the plays you need to make here. It's crunch time at the Madame Athletic Center between two very good teams. The Battle of the Birds here tonight. Shots are 27 to 13 currently for the UBC Thunderbirds. And it's been a little bit of a quieter start, at least in the shot department here in the third period and you can probably expect less shots here in the third because both teams know how to lock things down defensively. They've had the entire year to work together and that's the thing with hockey, right? Out the start, the first couple of weeks, there's a lot of goals, but then all of a sudden you start working together as a unit, working better as a five-man unit on the ice, four lines, three defense pairs, and all of a sudden you're one of the best defensive teams in the league. So that's what you see out there for both these squads here and they're Pretty much living up to their entire expectations here in this game. Yeah, both teams buying in to their coach's uh, defensive setting and their defensive uh, defensive setup as a team, you would say. And, and it's clearly shown, like you've said, Damien. And we've needed three power play goals for this game to actually kind of open up a little bit. Three of the four being on the man advantage, a combined three for five for both squads. As McGill goes two for three, and then UBC going one for two. So, from my calculation, that is 60% on the night. Yeah, doing far better than their percentages on the year, even though both of them are one and two in U Sports on the power play. Pretty impressive stuff we've seen. They've definitely lived up to their reputation in the special teams department. Keon off the wall. Long dump off across the on the other side. Shot by Mutala looking to beat Shank. Catch him lacking a little bit. Well, that's picked off. Puck goes off the wall. Forte looking to skate into it. No icing called in the play. He takes the body. Hits Smith along the wall. Mutala will come out with it. He takes a stick from Stefan Ward. UBC does not like that one one bit. 
letting the ref hear it a little bit from the bench is Coach Sven Hootenshan. Former NHL player, played in the 2004 playoffs for the New York Islanders, four games there, and had a, had a good career in the DEL and also played in the 2010 Olympics as well. Yeah, and he happened to be the Canada West Coach of the Year this year uh, after UBC, or possibly before UBC, won that Canada West title. So congratulations to him. He's been with the program eight years and has made the Canada West playoffs all eight years. And clearly he's taken this program to its first U Sports appearance in a long time. So congratulations to him. Yeah, he has definitely taken the Thunderbirds to new heights this year and the past couple as well. Deflection in, trying to get it in its Thorpe, but he can't get it through as the Redbirds are starting to tie it up defensively a little bit here. Belzeal in behind the net. Ford clears it around. He loses it. Picked off shot. Just goes off, just goes wide. That was Kyle McNabb just missing the just missing the net there. Puck goes all the way down. Lee goes back to get it. He takes a hit from Rouleau. Puck up high, slap shot towards the net, can't get it through. He might have an opportunity. It's Ty Thorpe on the breakaway backhand. What a save! Alexi Shank sticking out the right pad. Keeps this game at 2-2. Ty Thorpe's going to take this one in by himself once again, passing the slot. He can't get a, a stick on it as Ty Thorpe gets a hit on him behind the play. A lot going on here. At the Madame Athletic Center with 13.30 left to go in the third period. The Redbirds, UBC back and forth here in the third. Kindry dropping it back. A shot looking for deflection off the stick of Jack Wismer. He couldn't get it through. Talk about a shift by Ty Thorpe. Uh, wow, two chances there he produced for UBC and they're not done yet. Keon up high. Kindry with the shot. Almost snuck it through a couple of bodies. Lee will now come off the bench. She takes a hit. Puck goes all the way up. Uba looking to chop that one in. Takes some contact from Lambos. And here's Kinry over for Jake Lee in behind the net as things sort of start to calm down. When things open up, they really do open up. Yeah, there's been a lot of quick swings of momentum this game, and it, you're right, it happens quick. Mutala dropping it off. Nice give and go. Lee trying to sneak it past Shank there. Can't get it through. Lambos back for Lee in the slot. Makes a nice move across. Here's Mutala looking for the backdoor pass. Can't get it through. Unfortunately, Eric Ubai broke a stick there or just lost it. He would have had almost a half breakaway had he had the stick in his hands. Unlucky for the McGill forward. So that's a little bit of a break for UBC, but back the other way. Taking this shot, they score! McGill Red, the McGill Redbirds strike right back and have the lead 3-2 to two here with 12 minutes left to go. Stephen Uard, talk about answering the bell. Nice pass from Frateroli, feeds him, and he goes low glove on Schwebius post in, looks off the two-on-one and absolutely rips it post in. That is a pro-level shot, Damian. What a goal to put the Redbirds up by one. So some more resilience now for the Thunderbirds with 12 on the clock. Our first reg uh, regulation goal in a little bit. Since the first period, we had three power play goals in a row. And now Stefan Ward with the 3-2 equalizer at the moment and the Thunderbirds are going to have to pull something out here and we'll see if the Redbirds will start to lock down defensively. Most important goal of this game so far for sure. Five on five like you said. And he's still on the ice causing havoc. Here's Ward, the latest goal scorer. We'll drop it off for Gagnon as they just look to kill off some precious seconds here. But we still got a lot of time left to go between the McGill Redbirds and the UBC Thunderbirds here. McGill, can they pull off the upset? I know both teams are 
pretty similar in the standings overall, but McGill is the number six seed at the end of the day, so we'll see if they can come out with a 3-2 or better win here tonight yeah. on the away side of things. Pardon me, yeah, and McGill actually came into the tournament higher ranked than UBC on the national rankings, although because of their playoff, early playoff exit, you could say, in the semifinals of the OUA. Uh, they came in as the sixth seed, but are proving themselves to be above UBC in the ranking so far. Here we get another look at the goal. We'll get two angles at it. Just a great low glove shot. It's a shot we're seeing in the NHL quite a bit nowadays. Really tough for a goalie to save that, especially as he's shifting over to his right side. Shreebi is in good position, but just an even better shot there by Ward. Big time goal by a big time player, and he's having a great game. 16 points on the year. Didn't score in the playoffs. A couple of assists in six games, but that's his first, I guess you could count it as postseason goal for the McGill Redbirds. With 10.23 left to go here in the third, the Redbirds, despite getting outshot 30 to 14, find themselves up 3 to 2 here with just over 10 minutes left to go in regulation. How will the Thunderbirds respond? That is the question. They got a lot of offensive weapons. You can probably expect Jake Lee to be playing the next, I guess, 8 out of 10 minutes probably. We'd we'll love to see the stat line on that if it comes out, but he has the puck right now coming down the left side. In behind the net, the Thunderbirds and the Redbirds battle. Coming out with it, though, the Thunderbirds. Swinging up high, Lambos keeping it in, though. Good job doing so. UBC applying some pressure. You can expect them to start selling out a little bit as the time ticks down. Meaning in turn, oh, we got a penalty on the play. We do have a penalty on the play. It's going to be going to the Redbirds. I believe maybe a high stick or, or something like that, but caught a man up high, and the Redbirds should be headed to the box here. Looks like it's going to be Scott Walford, I believe, going to the box for a couple of minutes here with 9.51 left to go in the third period. Walford is going to be going off to the box. See right there. Yeah, just kind of a careless stick by the assistant captain for McGill. Oh, got a nice close-up look at it. That's a, that's a great zoom in by the crew here on CBC as we await the rest of the third period action here. We got the... UBC Thunderbirds looking to equalize this game at three. We have a three to two lead at the current moment for the McGill Redbirds. And we will be right back on CBC. As we welcome you back inside the Madby Athletic Center. It's the UBC Thunderbirds looking to tie this game up here at three. Got a key power play opportunity here. Looking to tie this one up to tie it in the quarterfinals. Last one in the 2024 U Sports Men's Hockey U Cup here on CBC. Quick player to mention for UBC, Jake Lee. We've been talking about him quite a lot uh, tonight. In, this, in tonight's game, he, in the playoffs, has four uh, points, three of which are on the power play. Expect him to look to get his shot off here in these next two minutes. 
Yeah, he's out there right now at the right point. Will he get this puck? He does not. It's chipped out by Zachary Gala. Mutala with a little bit of pressure on him, but he gets it out. Pressure by Dumont. Atkinson with a little bit of room. One-timer. Jake Lee shoots that right over top of the net with a fantastic opportunity. Mutala patrolling the blue line. One-timer just goes wide off the stick of Josh Williams. Whoa. Swing up high. Mutala fakes. One-timer coming up. Maybe not. Mutala, another one. Rebound. Kicked out. Here's Lee in behind the net. Pass over. Whoa. Back up high. Mutala. Lee with the shot. Can't get it through. Shank. And that is cleared by the McGill Redbirds. Lee had his chances. Shank just closing out the angle. The first chance he just missed the net wide. And then the second chance, Lee closed it off. Great save. 8.15 left to go. 20 seconds in the power play. Lee looking for a shot. That's blocked. Here they come back the other way. It's Mathieu Gagnon looking for the pass over to his brother, Alexandre Gagnon, the brothers from Gatineau, Quebec. As that would have been a pretty storybook ending there if they could have found the back of the net. Yeah, wouldn't that have been something? Kindry. As the power play expires for the UBC Thunderbirds, looking to equalize this game up at three. Pass up high. Shot by Pouliot. Goes wide. Puck bounces out in front. It's bouncing, but that's taken away by Eric Uba. In the neutral zone, dropping it off. Here's William Brulot taking a hit from Ben Keon in the corner. Kindry in the... In the other corner, takes a hit up high. Puck goes off the wall and all the way down into the McGill end. Great kill by McGill there as they come back. Looking for a counterattack on UBC as they go to change. UBC got to start applying some pressure. Time's ticking down. It's going to start moving faster and faster as the game goes along here. For them at least. Yeah, under seven minutes left to go. Potential break here, but a good defensive play there by Xavier Forte who lost the puck, but got back in defensive transition and took it away. As the Redbirds will just hang back at the current moment. Kreisky dumps it in. Hounded, he comes out with it, takes a shot, and that's gloved away by Alexis Shank with 6.24 left to go here. In the third period, CBC Sports is the home of university sports all across Canada. The best youth sports women's volleyball teams are in Hamilton right now for this week's 2024 Youth Sports Women's Volleyball Championship. Catch all the action exclusively on CBC Gem, CBC Sports.ca, the CBC Sports app, and CBC Sports YouTube. Youth Sports on CBC, chase the glory. 6.24 left to go here in the third. The UBC... UBC Thunderbirds will look to tie this game up at three. Yep, they got their top line out there right now. Adam Ho, Josh Williams, Sasha Mutala, and then, or Mutala, pardon me, and then Lee and Lambos on D. Uh, these are some of the top point getters, all, or four of the five on this line, averaging over a point per game. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen likely from this line, unless... Somebody else is stepping up for UBC. A lot of shots will be going to the net as they currently have the advantage. 34 to 14 is the advantage that UBC has right now in the shot category. Long shot goes all the way down. That's icing called against the McGill Redbirds. So UBC, they will take it with 20 is the difference right now in the shot category. Just under six minutes left to go here. Of course, UBC gets last change as the home team. That is the main difference you kind of get in a neutral environment for both these teams. And they will send out Kindry, Atkinson, and Chris Douglas back out there with the cage. Isn't that something you like to see back in the play? We'll see how he can get back on the ice and into the action once again. Yeah, you want to talk about a gamer, man. Assistant captain for this UBC team. Takes a super hard hit. One of the hardest in the tournaments for sure. And, and comes right back out with his team. Just uh, 
Shows a lot about his character and about his grit. Cleared around. Douglas misses it. Gets the puck back. Holds on to it. McGill doesn't like that. Refs blow it off. There's Ford in the corner. Battling with Douglas. He takes a hit. There's Frateroli over for Rouleau. Here's Uba now. Just looking to get it to the red line and dump it in. Takes some physicality. Now here's Smith. Winding in on the left side. Just dumps it in while a couple players go off on a change. Lee looking to pick that off. He does. Kept in by McNabb. Takes a shot. Looking to just slow it down. And UBC, they'll take that with a whistle, which should be going to the left of Alexi Shank. Tough look. If Shank is seeing it, Shank is saving it. Uh, in this game, he saved 33 shots and has been amazing. One thing we wanted to highlight here on the broadcast is Dave Keon's son, Ben Keon, is on UBC number 12. He uh, is the grandson of Dave Keon, as I just said, who actually won a Conn Smythe for the Leafs in 1967 in this building. Thought it was worth mentioning. Nice little full, full circle moment there for, uh, for Ben Keon as the grand, grandson of Dave Keon. And the UBC Thunderbirds will look to tie it up for Ben Keon and co. As Rask will look to keep that one in he does but the Thunderbirds can't really get much out of it and big hit there from Puglia on Dumont after just tipping that one in and Dumont will go off here's Ty Thorpe who had that great chance earlier in the third period on the breakaway but Alexi Shank sticking out the right pad keeping that game at two Two apiece. Forte with a great chance. Backhand, forehand. Couldn't tuck it in. He takes a couple of bodies in behind the net. And Lee now will pass it over. They look to dump it in. Williams looking for the pass on the other side. It's Wo out there with Mutala. Wo back up high. Lambos. Here's Lee looking for the bank behind the net. Williams. Little shimmy shake there. Drops it off. Here's Lambos with the shot. That's blocked. Puck goes up. Whoa. With 3.50 left to go in the third period. He can't keep it in. That's Sam Huo at the line. Mutala. Makes a nice move. Trying to get in. Is held down. UBC wants to call on the play. They're not going to get it. Here in the later stages. Lee with the pass. Over for Williams. He can't get it through. Williams over for Huo, takes a hit in behind the net, loses it, puck goes all the way around, and it's out. Potential chance here for McGill. They can't get it through as Lee goes back there on defense and will restart the play. Great job by Jake Lee to get back there even at the end of a shift. He's played at least two and a half out of the last four minutes and gets back just to, to keep the puck back in McGill's end. I thought that was an interesting no call on that hook there by the McGill defender. Refs keeping the whistles talked for what we can assume is the rest of the game. Smith plays it over. Ryan Puglia dumps that in, but not as far as he would have liked as McGill will break this one out. Three on two. Gallon looking for the pass. Takes a shot, and it gets deflected out and into the netting with a 3-2 lead currently for the McGill Redbirds as we have a game tomorrow at 1 p.m. between the TMU Bolds, the host of this tournament, up against the UNB Reds. UNB, the number one seed, and TMU, the number four seed. Both teams winning their first games. TMU, a overtime thriller last night with a Carson Gallagher double overtime snipe past the Dinos, and TMU will move on to the Final Four. We're at UNB. They're the team to beat right now. That's, that's what everyone is saying. Going a perfect 30-0 in the regular season and through all of their playoffs as well. Just completely dominating their competition. We'll see how those two teams match up tomorrow in the semifinal. Should be a great game, especially with the home crowd at TMU. Here's McNabb. Just over two minutes left to go here in this quarterfinal between the McGill Redbirds and the UBC Thunderbirds. UBC still find themselves down three to two as the three seed here where McGill is the number six. So you could say if McGill comes out with a win here, it could be a little bit of an upset. 
but we know that both these teams match up quite well as Cole Schwebis is out of the net currently. And look who is on the ice. It's Captain Chris Douglas at the point as bodies fall in behind the net. Puck goes all the way around and out of play. Williams swings it over. Here's Lee looking for a pass in the slot. Can't get it through. McGill trying to clear it with 80 seconds left to go on the clock. Mutala on the left side. One-timer coming. Lee, he can't get it through. Rebound out in front. Whoa, couldn't get a shot on net. Here's Lee now taking a shot. Looking for deflection. That's blocked away by Shank. One minute left to go in regulation. UBC needs a goal here to tie it up as we have a stoppage of play with 56 seconds left to go. UBC doing everything they can to put the puck on the net. McGill doing a good job at keeping it out and preventing those high danger opportunities from happening. A much needed stop. Stoppage of play, rather, for the McGill Redbirds. It seems as though we got a timeout. Yep. UBC and coach Sven Hootshawn are taking a timeout. They're going to take time to talk this one over, get their top guys a rest, and out comes the board to chalk something up and see if they can equalize this game at three apiece. The Redbirds going to do the same uh, with their coach and David Urquhart. But what a finish we've had here at the Mattamy Athletic Center. Pretty great game overall. It's a five-on-five -five goal that took the lead for UBC, and then it was a five-on-five -five goal that took the lead for McGill. Absolutely great stuff. You can't ask for a better game. I mean, I don't know if we'd like another double overtime game, Damien, but I would. I would. I would. I, I wouldn't I would. be opposed. I wouldn't be opposed. It's been great hockey all uh, through Thursday and Friday. Here we got two more days of the Esports Cup to go, and uh, couldn't be more excited and grateful for an opportunity like this. And for UBC, they're missing Jonathan Smart, their second leading scorer on the back end, 22 points in 27 games. So they had to rely a ton on Jake Lee tonight on the offensive and defensive end. That's a player they're probably missing right now. A big hit to their power play, their offensive strengths, and how we can move the puck around on the back end. Let's see if they can win this draw. UBC does. Chopped out. Not yet. The puck is in Lee's equipment. He keeps it out of play, so UBC will have to try this once again. Huo dumps that all the way around. There's Williams on the right side, taking a hit. Douglas, down low. As Mutala trying to get that puck. McGill looking to get it out. Not out, though. Mutala taking a shot. That's gloved off by Alexi Shank. Looking very confident in that at the current moment. Pretty, pretty close there. He got a shot. It was a little high. Alexi Shank smothering it with the glove. We saw Sam Ho... Whoa, pardon me, lose a stick in that uh, in that little play right there. He had to run to the bench, and the equipment manager got him one quick as he's ready to take this draw. Galant against Huo here, both on strong sides. Who will win the draw? It's Zach Galant. McGill clears it around. It goes past Mutala. He's going to have to dive at this, gets it back to Lee. 20 seconds left to go. They drop it off. UBC. Williams loses it in the corner. 10 seconds left to go. Can they get it to the points? UBC loses it. Zach Galan will chip that up in the air. Gagnon will go to get it. The seconds will trickle down. And the McGill Redbirds, an upset over the UBC Thunderbirds. The number six seed will move on to the final four and play the UQTR Patriots. What a game. What a game by McGill, getting the upset against UBC, coming in after not playing for quite a while, after losing to UQTR in the semifinals of the OUA East. What a game, what a game, what resilience by the Redbirds to come out on top and win the Battle of the Birds, Damien. It's not often you get to say that, too. Not I don't often. know when these teams will ever play against each other, too. So it was a great game here today. Shots were 37 to 14, but you got to feel for a lot of the UBC players at the current moment. You see Jake Lee there on one knee, played a ton of minutes tonight. The number one D-man on the back end. McGill has to be pretty content with their story so far as a number six seed. 
beating the number three seed in the UBC Thunderbirds. A very close game down to the wire, but a game-winning goal in the third period from the McGill Redbirds. From Stefan Ward, his first goal in playoff competition this year, seals a deal for McGill, landing them a spot in the final four. Yeah, and we talked about this yesterday. It's sometimes it's those role players that are going to come out and make the big plays in the big games that matter. So big shout out to Kouard for that. But we also want to give a mention to Alexi Shank. He did outstanding, saving 35 shots from a talented UBC team. He had to make some saves, yes. especially late there. Yes. They were pressing. The puck was in the zone for most of that little six on five when UBC pulled their goalie, Shrevius. But or Schwebius, pardon me, but shout out to him. He played outstanding, was very solid, didn't give any looks really after that second period, and had a solid third that obviously, or that ultimately was the reason the Redbirds came out on top. Alexi Shank also struggled in the playoffs, and of course, the last game against UQTR, UQTR beat them by a, a sizable uh, score there. So, a good response by the netminder for McGill in the first game of this tournament here. It's been a little bit of a while since they played as we get our player of the game ceremonies. You get Josh Williams there at number 41 who had the opening goal of the game. And Alexi Shank, the game, or the player of the game here. So strong in the net today, 35 to 37 in the save department. Deservingly so. The netminder out of Laval, Quebec. Hometown kid, you could say, getting a much needed win in the quarterfinal. Quarterfinal, sorry, for Miguel. Putting them on path to get back to that 2012 U Sports Championship. Uh, it's a great game. We'll hear from him shortly or as about right now for his post-game interview with arena host Abigail Dove. Alexi Shank, super good tonight, and McGill will go home happy. 3-2 win, despite getting outshot 37-14, come out with a one-goal difference in the end. The McGill Redbirds will go off to the Final Four, and they have... They confirmed at least two more games. We don't know how they're going to do against UQTR, but it's going to be a great Final Four matchup between these two. Well, McGill, you got UQTR, you got TMU against UNB. Yeah, it's going to be an unbelievable semifinal, and regardless of the winners of both of those semifinals, great bronze games and great gold medal games. Let's take a look at the highlights from this game, starting off with the first period. We saw a kind of relatively slow start. Not that many shots on that, but the hits were present from the beginning of the game all the way to the end, I would say, Damien. Absolutely. And, you know, it was a little bit of a slower start, right? I guess you say, like, these teams really haven't played against against each other. Eight to six were the shots in the first period. Not a ton of high-danger opportunities. You could say that there was a couple of posts for the McGill Redbirds, but a key goal there out the gate from Josh Williams. That was the lone one. They had the lead going into the second, and Quo with a good chance there. But the Redbirds and the Thunderbirds made the second period. The theme was the power play, right? They got three power play goals in that second period, and... That ended up being the main story of the game, past the goaltenders maybe, but a great shot there, a great goal. Jake Lee thought he had that one, and it would have put them up 2-1, to one, but nevertheless, the McGill Redbirds came back and put a good effort in and came out with a 3-2 win tonight. Yeah, and it, it's fair to say this game could have went anyway, I believe. Like, Alexi Shank played a great game, but with all the posts, uh, with all the power play opportunities, uh, this game could have went anyway, and I thought... It was a great job by McGill to come out on top. They definitely earned it. They capitalized on their opportunities and uh, and really close out the game well, especially with UBC pressing, putting their top guys on the ice. I thought McGill's defense did well to keep physical, not let them get any chances, and collapse down low as a unit, as all five guys. There really wasn't much UBC could do late in that game. Uh, but here we see the third period where all the action took place. Uh, pretty crazy breakaway here. That was the play right there. That's one of those plays you look back on. Stefan Huard coming back the other way. 
getting the lone goal of the third period. That was huge for, Mor- for McGill, and all they needed to do kind of was just lock down, work well as a five-man unit in the end. Yeah, most definitely. It was, who would who knows what would have happened if that were to go in, if that were to fall that breakaway. But it was a great game overall, and it was UBC that closed it out. So amazing for them. Uh, what an outstanding match. What an outstanding four quarterfinal games we saw over Thursday and Friday. We had the opportunity to call the TMU Bowl for Steinle's game yesterday, which was amazing. This game was also amazing, and uh, the two games moving on should be just as good. Yeah, we've had a couple of really close matchups. It's been great for us, but let's take a look at some of the game stats here tonight. A 3-2 win for the McGill Redbirds, and uh, overall a tidy piece of business for the away team, the number six seed. The lone bottom seed actually moving to the final four. TMU, the number four seed, beating Calgary, the number five. Number two, uh, the UQTR Patriots beating Moncton. And then number one, UND beating Brock. So McGill is the is the lone wolf right there. Lone wolf of upsets, you could say here. We got the scoring summary. It was Josh Williams in the first for UBC, then Fortin and Gallant on the power play for McGill in the second and then Ross for UBC uh, in that second period as well. And then Huard getting the game winner, the clutch Gina Huard, his first point of the power, or of the playoffs rather. What a story there. It's funny because we didn't really know how this game was going to go. These teams haven't really played a whole lot against each other. We knew it was going to be sort of a, a defensive, cohesive unit. And that ended up being the story with a 3 2 win for the McGill Redbirds over the UBC Thunderbirds. It was a it was a great game overall here at the Madame Athletic Center and we got two more game two more days and four more games left to go here in the next two days. Yeah, these semifinal matchups are going to be very interesting starting off tomorrow with UNB against TMU. Those are two talented teams. Obviously UNB the heavy favorite. It'll be interesting to see if the TMU Bold can get an upset with the home crowd. And on the other side, we got UQTR facing off against McGill. Battle of Quebec is going to be amazing. It's going to be a great couple days ahead. Yeah, it's going to be great. And we thank you very much for tuning in to CBC here for the 2024 U Sports National Championship for men's hockey. Sports on CBC, presented by the Championnat du Sport à Radio Canada, une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada, Nike, just do it, Fedler, Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program, fier partenaire des prix de l'entraîneur de l'année U Sport, Vera Burn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979, partenaire du sport universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusive des bagues des championnats U Sport. 